previously on transmissions from Colony One. Cut thrusters. Touchdown. Wasp has landed. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not receiving signals from NASA, MECD, ESA, or Hercules. Kaya? We've lost her. We've lost the Earth. This Ada Karina. There wouldn't be any associated danger, would there? We'd all be dead before we'd even notice it. Why? Earth was hit by gamma ray burst? Well, Earth is gone. Huh? What? What about the Chinese? The Chinese? What about the Chinese? They built that moon base a few years back, right? So? Maybe if there was a crew station there. For Dustin. December 31, 2056. Times Square. New York City. Earth. It's a brisk New Year's Eve right here at Times Square with less than one hour away from ringing in the most historic New Year in our lifetimes. I'm your host, Clifford Stillman, and to my left, well, this lovely lady needs no introduction, but I'm going to give her one anyway. <laughs> Gimme Zola! Hey, Cliff. Pretty exciting night, isn't it? Tonight we not only celebrate the start of 2057, but history on Earth and elsewhere. That's right, Cliff. Big time. Tonight's all about Mekti. Tonight is the culmination of years of hard work and dedication from literally millions of people around the world. MECTI-1, the first of hundreds of manned missions to Mars, is set to land on the surface tonight. The crew, headed by Commander Sam Flynn, includes some of humanity's bravest. We will, of course, be bringing you live feed from the cockpit of MECTI-1's ship, the Wasp, once they land. But this is only one of three historical events Mekti has planned for tonight. Mekti couldn't have just one milestone for us to celebrate. When Mekti 1 lands on Mars, Mekti 2 will launch from Earth orbit. Midnight of 2057 will mark a turning point in human civilization. From that moment on, we will become interplanetary. The Mekti 2 crew, led by Commander Tim Conrad, is set to launch for Mars just as Sam Flynn and Mekti-1 will be touching down on the surface. But hold on a second, Cliff. Mekti has three events planned for us tonight, right? There has also been an agreement between Mekti and the China National Space Administration. As we speak, there is a delegation of Mekti officials currently meeting with Zhao Li, commander of the Chinese moon base, where the formal alliance will be signed. Scott Richmond, reporter for Mekti's Mars Now Network, is live from the moon. December 31, 2056. China National Space Administration Moon Base. Guang Hong Kong 1. Shackleton Crater. Earth's Moon. So. So, so. I guess we are co-workers now. I'll admit, it took some negotiating with the rest of the board for crew changes. Well, there will be hundreds of crews. We got you six, all Chinese. And we both know there will be more in the future. This is the great start.
my child. Hmm. Missions to Mars. How did we get here? If you ask me, I would not want to be on MACT-2 tonight. They launch moments after MACT-1 lands. What if something goes wrong on MACT-1? What if the landing fails? What if there was one variable that they never accounted for? It would be a tragedy. But the mission would continue. They need to continue. We are in too deep now. As difficult as losing MACT-1 would be, you can't shut down because of one failure. If that happens though, and MACT-2 has to launch with that to look forward to, Oh, such a beautiful view of Earth. Don't think I'd ever get tired of this. I hear that we have to leave tomorrow. Be happy you're here for four days. My crew and I still have five months to go. The countdown has begun, Commander Lee. Thank you, Captain. Be there shortly. <sighs> Time to see if your accomplishments have paid off, Administrator Vidas. Shall we? My pleasure, Commander Lee. Commander. Don't stop until we get a hold of someone that can fill us in. 
The signal's still open at Space Station Hercules, but no response. Keep calling them. They're probably busy with getting a handle on the situation themselves. All frequencies and all backup frequencies. Zhouquan, Beijing, Wenchang, Taiyuan, Xichang, everyone and anywhere. Repeat, this is Mech, the Administrator Dario Vidas calling Mech, the Headquarters, the Nova. This is Max Baker, Associate Administrator of Strategic Infrastructure. This is Lee Mohor Chesson, Mech, the Advisor, Rose Cooper, Mech, the General Counsel, calling from Chinese Mech, the Mission Director, Leslie Jacobs, calling from Wuhan, Mech, the London, Mech, the Mech, the Mech, the Mech, the Mech, the Mech, the Mech, there's been some kind of communication failures. <laughs> 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 We're not sure why. Please respond if you hear me. Are you there? Hours later. Okay, this is Leslie Jacobs calling Space Station Hercules. It has been two hours since communication failure. If there is anyone on board Space Station Hercules, you have a live and open signal. Please report to us that you've received our transmission. Now talk to us. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is Rolls Cooper and Mech Team on board with the Chinese moon base. Please call us. Rolls has gone dark, and there's been radio silence ever since. You did the knowledge of the game. JPL, Alex, Paris, London, Tokyo, Mumbai, fucking Alex Springs in the middle of the goddamn outback won't even respond. It's been two hours, not a damn word. Mr. Vidas, how long do you say until your Inception satellite launches? Reception, Omar. Reception 2. Six hour after communications lost, Perception 2 launches into geosynchronous orbit, relaying messages from Mech the headquarters to Mars. Right. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing? No. Perception 2 will launch, Joe. Once communications are severed, the timer begins. Six hours sharp. Would you like some? Whoa! Oh, 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 Captain Shaw report. What happened? What was that flash of light? No incidents reports, Commander. Oh is that? Did something just explode? What do you mean? Explode. Captain, you didn't, you didn't find out what happened in Fireball where it was a flash of light and then nothing. It was all right. That's what out when the base did it. I didn't hear it. No, the base is fine. Where did that flash come from? What direction? Where is Mech D2? What? Mech D2, Mech D2, come in. Shit, did they launch? Mech D2, come in. Mech D2 launched? Are you sure? They must have launched. How? Why? What? What is going on? Am I right? It didn't short circuit, did it? It's a fusion propelled engine. Don't no short circuit. They chose to launch. What made them decide to leave? So there wasn't any kind of malfunction? Amongst the infinite possible glitches that could occur on a Mech D Maya rocket, a spontaneous fusion engine ignition is not one of them. What then? Why haven't they responded to our call? The moon base's communications equipment is still intact, right? Yes. All systems on Guanghangu are in perfect condition. What made them launch then? Why did they not respond to our calls? Good job. I don't know. I don't understand any of this. Great. I am Minister Vidas. Do we head back to Hercules? Uh, I, I I don't know what to do. Get to a console and call those frequencies again. All of them. We still have four hours until the Perception 2 satellite launches. If it launches. If the satellite launches, we use it to relay our message to Earth. Establishing contact with Earth is the priority, no matter how long it takes. 
Everyone get back to work. Continue calling all frequencies. Administrator Adas. Hey, we are right. Oh, now she's gone. Charlie is commander here. Administrator of Adas to Mekdi headquarters. Respond to this call. We just witnessed Mekdi to a line. Mekdi, London. This is Scott Richmond, host of Mars Now. On board the Chinese moon base. Mekdi 2 is launched away. We have it. This is Captain Omar Alvarez calling again. We've reported a communications dropout and we'd really like to hear from you. Or anyone. Blackout, and from the absence of any light pollution, we 
we can safely assume there's been a full electrical grid failure. But whatever has happened, whatever caused it, it will get resolved. MACD will get this taken care of. The Chinese Space Administration will get this taken care of. We've not been forgotten up here. Patience and diligence as we move forward. There are 86 people currently on board Guanghan Gong Wan. We have enough water, oxygen, food, and supplies for an entire year. We need to stay persistent. We have the time to endure. We owe it to our people down there to keep at it. Mekti headquarters. Nikki Flores calling for you to watch the same Denali. This is Rose Cooper calling you back. He's going to watch it. He's going to there on the moon. But that we send you an early happy New Year's greeting. Come on. Alex, someone is in Please be safe. Please. Six hours. Eighty-six people cramped inside four transport ships for thirty-six hours. We have better propulsion systems on the transports here. You're sure we'll be able to fit enough supplies too? More than sure. We'll be able to stuff enough supplies in there for everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Wen, where's Commander Lee? I can't recommend it to speak with her. Please be seated. Commander Lee is currently busy with other matters, and she ordered me to meet you all to give you her update. Update? What update, Captain? At our current rate of food consumption, Commander Lee is suggesting we begin altering our diets to allow for the food to last considerably longer. You gotta be kidding me. How much is she wanting to cut it down? <laughs> One third. This is such bullshit. Rationing our rations. <laughs> that will allow much more time to seek out a oh, for Christ's sake, May. It's been two months. Where is Commander Lee? Um, in her quarters. In her quarters, huh? All right. Everybody come with me. Had enough of this bullshit. Mr. Richmond. Mr. Richmond? Scott? Commander Lee! Commander Lee! Open up! You want us to reduce our rations to keep us here longer? Mr. Richmond. Commander Lee, we have a flight plan for returning to Hercules. We take three transport ships and the Mechti Trans. stay here. I have a wife down there. I have a daughter. When can I see my family? We all have people down there we care about. Ciao. Perception 2 has not launched. Omar Alvarez and Emma Murphy have already drawn up the flight plan and procedures for docking at Space Station Hercules. Whatever happened down there, people need our help. We are not doing much good up here. Administrator Vidas, we stay. Commander, we're living in an environment with manufactured gravity and air pressure. Starving ourselves in a manufactured environment. Get to the PC and run through those frequencies again. You have your orders. Come in. Commander! Open up! Another two months later. May 16, 2057, uh, attempting a reestablishment of communication with Space Station Hercules and Earth. It's been over four months since the launch of MECT-2 and the beginning of the blackout. It's been about a month since the heavy clouds on Earth dissipated, yet there's no sign of activity. If you 
somehow are hearing this, respond to this frequency immediately. I keep Over. I take this calling from the control center, Juan Hakong, the CNSA moon base to Mackey, Cape Town. Please respond. We've experienced a communications blackout four months ago. Jane Goodwin sending out another call to Mackey Terraformation Lab and Rita. Rita. Please respond whenever you are. You had MECD Argentina on your frequency list for the day, correct? I think so, yeah. Gotcha. How about uh, yeah, so. This is Ben Richards on board the Chinese moon base Shackleton Crater. Good afternoon. Air, air, call back at frequency. As of this moment, I am ordering all personnel to cease communication efforts. About goddamn time. I have considered the flight plan designed by Omar Alvarez and Ava Murphy, and I have agreed a return mission to Earth is in everyone's best interests. Captain Alvarez, open up the mission report. Yes. Yes, Commander. As you can see on the screen, we're taking all four of our transport ships docked at the base, and we're headed for Space Station Hercules. As of right now, the best answer we have for what happened on Earth was some kind of EMP. What does not add up, though, is the situation on Hercules. So we head there first. Maybe we'll find answers there. Sounds good to me. After that, we'll make for the Mekti Space Elevator Orbit Station and take the elevator down to the surface station on Jarvis Island. Once on the surface, we'll get flights back to our respective headquarters. At last. Head to the supply depot and grab all your personal belongings. We're taking everything. We will not return to Guahan Gong Wan. All crew file out. I understand it's a risk, but the one we need to take. I hope you're right, Dario. Standing by, Commander. Shadow 1, commands primary engine ignition. Safe travels, Jimmy. Copy, Commander. Igniting engine now. Captain 1, commands primary engine ignition. Acknowledge, Commander. Executing primary ignition. Omar, you're cleared for launch. Commands ignition. Successful takeoff of Shadow 1. Copy, Commander. See you in the end. Farewell, Wahango. Captain Shaw, execute primary ignition. Copy, Commander. Ignition in 3, 2, 1. Successful takeoff. Copy that, Captain. Okay, everyone. Captain Shaw and I will be executing some positioning thruster burns. But rest easy. We are now en route to Space Station Hercules.
Harvey Rose. Come on back to mission control. What? Fuck. <sighs> the entire crew. Uh. Should we load up with supplies and head back to Guanghangu? What? Go back? <sighs> we can't go back. But this still could be an EMP. Omar, are you suspected of EMP? I don't know, Ava. The station's power has remained on. It couldn't have been an EMP. What now? What now? All crew is lost. I am afraid to ask what happened at headquarters. Uh, guys? Hmm? Huh? I, I may have found something over here. Maybe. This alert pop-up on this monitor next to me, it's, it's reading a, a PEM code. P-E-M? Oh! Planetary emergency message. P-E-M. They automatically broadcast based on the detection of danger event on Earth or Mars that might pose a high level threat to any of our missions. P-E-M 23-238-429. What does it mean? What does it two three? What does the number mean? It's a number code. The first part, 23, is the category number from the PEM index. Luckily, there's still power on the station, so I can search the index. And... Wait, there was a blackout on Earth. How are you able to access a network? The PEM database is located on a satellite orbiting the dwarf planet Sirius in the asteroid belt. What? Okay, PEM 23 is the category number for... Huh. What? What is it? PEM-23 means radiation event, Earth. What? Radiation event? What the hell? Last six numbers? I'm not entirely sure of. Searching 238-429. On PEMs, there would usually be a small bit of text or code describing the source of the problem, or the cause, or... Like it's the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory Star Catalog number. And SAO number for Eta Corina. Eta Corina? What is that? A supermassive star over 7,000 light years away. How would a star over 7,000 light years away cause a radiation event here? Well, perhaps a supernova. Let me see if the telescopes work and I can get a look of this thing. This star, this Eta Carina, it went supernova? I can't believe it. There we go. Oh, let's see, it's... Um... What is it? What? Eta Carina has collapsed. PEM detected a radiation event on Earth from Eta Corina. Earth was hit by a gamma ray burst. What? A gamma ray burst? No. no. What does that mean? This could not have happened. Look around, Commander. The body. That is what a gamma ray burst means. We must get down there. How do you know? It, uh, what? That, that couldn't have been. No. That, no. We must get home. That could not have happened. Commander Lee. How could I have Chad? Commander Lee. How? We need to get to the surface. How could that have happened? Everyone, we cannot stay here. Ciao. We need to get back to our ships. It. Ciao. It could not have happened. That's not possible. There's nothing we can do to change this fact. We need nothing to... we can do? What are you Commander talking? Lee, we need to get to the surface immediately. No matter what awaits us there, we need to go. You understand? Ciao. We gotta keep going. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Up on your feet. Locate and pack every single bit
made of food, water, and supplies we can store into our transport ships and ready for the space elevator orbit station. Whatever happened here and on Earth, we can't do anything to change that outcome. And we cannot stay here. Let's move! Space elevator, orbit station, airlock 2. Successful pressure adjust, airlock 2. Locks remain engaged. Copy. <sighs> Let's get aboard the orbit station and load our supplies into the elevator climber. Maybe find out where those abort capsules have gone to. Indeed. What is it, Denny? My wife is... Nothing, Commander Lee. Commander? <sighs> Come on. Um... What the... Uh... Huh? Everyone spread out and search the entire orbit station. Find the crew. This doesn't make sense. Gamma ray bursts travel at the speed of light. There would not be time to evacuate. Huh. Danny? What is it? The orbit station and the elevator are running on auxiliary power. Meaning? The elevator will not move up and down. The main fusion reactor at Jarvis Island surface station has been kicked offline. All auxiliary power is coming from the battery supplies here on the orbit station. <sighs> Let me guess. The only way to reboot the main power from the service station. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Right. <sighs> Structural integrity, station information and inventory, diagnostics. Those things are still online, but no operational power. No way we're taking the elevator down. <sighs> I see. Check diagnostics on the abort capsules. Collins here. We checked the crew habitat module. No sign of anyone. There's no one here. Coming back to the command center. Nothing out of the ordinary. The system logged all four abort capsules with manual jettisons. All of the orbit station's abort capsules have been manually jettisoned, and you don't think that's out of the ordinary? No evidence of any malfunctions of the sort. Mm -hmm. But the why they aborted remains a mystery. Nikki, what is it? We've checked all the lower levels and no sign of anyone. Heading to CC. Um, the farther we go, the more confusing it becomes. Guys, I think I've got something. To anyone on the Chinese moon base or Hercules that reads this, my name is Ken Simpson, assistant orbit station operator for the MECTI space elevator. We have reason to believe that an EMP has hit Earth, and it's knocked out operational power to the elevator. It's been four days since the event, and in those four days, we've heard nothing from Space Station Hercules or the surface. Nothing. I have given orders to abandon ship with our 11-person crew using one of our aboard capsules to link up with Space Station Hercules, and the remaining three to land near Jarvis Island. I hope that we regain operational power and communication soon. Ken Simpson, January 5th, 2057, 1620 hours. <sighs> There's your answer, Dario. I don't remember seeing any abort capsules at Space Station Hercules. After seeing what happened to the crew, why would you stay? Zhao, we cannot take the elevator. What are our options? I guess we do the only thing we can at this point. All crew, back to your ships and load procedures for re-entry. Shit. The space elevator is offline, and we're going to attempt a landing on Jarvis Island. You sure this is the best move, Chow? 
no. We gotta go, Dario. Next day, May 22nd, 2057. Altitude is 100 kilometers in dropping. Mekti Transport, PI. Mekti Transport Shuttle Bridging Carmen Line. Copy, Mekti Transport. Holland, heat reading. Coming up on 1000 Celsius. Mekti Transport reading nominal. How's your handling, Captain Shaw? Handling is perfect, Commander. <sighs> Mr. Richards, keep your eyes open on the left side for horizon visual. On beat CMD, standing by on horizon visual. Less altitude, 96.22 km and dropping. We are good, going good. Mackney transport, performing point to clockwise roll adjustment. 90 kilometers and dropping. Happy Leslie, nearing EQ glide. Decel rate is nominal. Point to roll complete. 4,800 meters per second velocity. December 26, 2051. Mekti Headquarters. Tonopa, Nevada. Six years earlier. Tim? The meeting isn't for a little while. Better early than late. Speaking of which, not sure where Commander Flynn is. What's going on in there? Come on in, Bruce. Thanks, Han. Confidential. Sorry, Commander. Gotta go in. Really? Huh. Administrator Ross, you know we aren't opposed to this CNSA merger. Shoot, they're already surprised. Yes, Mr. President. And here he is. Bruce, we've been expecting you. This is Bruce Farley, Chief Astronomical Advisor for MECTI and his assistant... Anne Oliver, sir. Anne Oliver, yes. Ms. Oliver, Bruce knows all of us here and has met President Ramirez before, but let me introduce you to the MECTI Board of Administrators. I am Roland Ross, Chief MECTI Administrator. Nathan Miller, Aeronautics Administrator. Michelle Locke, Physical and Biological Sciences Administrator. Deborah Palmer, Terraformation Administrator. Adam Gadling, Personnel and Human Factors Administrator. Sergei Yonkova, Operations Administrator. And on the video feed here, as I'm sure you know, is United States President Ernesto Ramirez. Yes, nice to meet you, Mr. President. Nice to meet all of you. Mr. Farley, we've heard rumors and unofficial reports of some substantial news directly related to the Mars Exploration Colonization Terraformation Initiative. Yes? Indeed, sir. The floor is yours, Mr. Farley. Thank you. <clears throat> this official MECD report concerns C-2033A2, a moon-sized comet discovered in 2033, located in the Kuiper Belt. When originally discovered and analyzed, the findings revealed C-2033A2 to be on a collision trajectory with Earth. 97% probability of a direct impact, 
100% probability of a glancing blow. Impact was slated for August 16, 2120. From the day these findings were made official until today, this data has never changed. <clears throat> August 3, 2037, Roscosmos launched what they simply dubbed the Large Nuclear Payload for C-2033A2 to intercept the comet. Its mission was to either destroy the comet or at the very least knock it from its current trajectory. Chances for success in both avenues were slim based on the sheer size of C-2033A2. To uphold absolute confidentiality, the mission was presented as a test to explore our capability to either destroy or divert any comets, asteroids, and or meteors that may threaten Earth. The public was never made aware that this was an honest answer to a threat. <clears throat> Yesterday, the large nuclear payload launched by Roscosmos 14 years ago intercepted C-2033A2. The Russians' hope of destroying this comet ended in failure. As far as diverting C-2033A2, the mission of Roscosmos is officially a resounding success. It's been knocked off course? Yes. Our team monitoring this comet checked any and all possible trajectories, and C-2033A2 has been knocked completely off course. Probability of a direct impact? Zero. Probability of a glancing blow? Zero. Holy well, shit. <laughs> and? These are copies of our findings and research. Of course, no other copies have been made and all is confidential. In our research, C-2033A2's current trajectory involves using Jupiter's gravity to slingshot into the asteroid field, where it will be intercepted by a total of 19 asteroids. In every probability, our calculations have resulted in the same exact destination. The comet will pass by Mars en route to colliding with the sun. Thank you for your work, Mr. Farley. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. We are now faced with a decision. As everyone present in this chamber is aware, the existence and trajectory of this comet is why METI was created. By the time of impact, a sizable and sustainable population of human beings would already be living in colonies on Mars, spreading across the planet as the terraforming efforts began to really take hold. This changes everything, though. We built up MECT to the public based on a lie. A lie that seems to now be the only reason to keep going. Well, the necessity for MECT's existence seems to be pretty moot. There's no longer a threat. Nothing to make us keep going than simply to follow through with the mission. Agreed. This is true. Sergey. I would like to see the mission through. Thank you, Administrator Yankova. Honestly, I think that since there's no longer a threat, the trillions of dollars being pumped into Mekti could be better allocated here on Earth to take care of problems here. Having said that, I concur with Administrators Yakova and Miller. We've come too far to turn back. President Ramirez, with this knowledge, would the United States government still be a supporter in the program? The United States is in for the long haul, without question. Then I side with the president here. I vote to continue with the missions. And Adam, I mean... There's no dire need for us to proceed with the mission. We don't need to go to Mars now. But if we stop, what in the world did we accomplish? We need to see this through. It is true that the immediate need for Mekti is no longer, but who knows what the future holds? And there will be a time when being an interplanetary species will be the greatest decision we may have ever made. The decision is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Thank you both. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President. Bruce, if Commanders Conrad and Flynn are waiting outside, you can send them in. Thank you, everyone. The crew's performance and actions are reflective of their commander. Don't discount my crew, though. They can be soft around the edges, sure. They may be a bit more prone to speak their minds than yours, but they're human. When it gets down to it, they do the job. And I wouldn't trade them for anything. Bruce? Dan? Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. What's up? Good afternoon, Tim. What's going on in there? Oh, um, I can't really... The Mekti chairman wanted me to tell you that they're ready for you now. Be seeing you around. Later, guys. Good luck. See ya. Anne? Yeah, Bruce? I'm taking you out for dinner. <laughs> Bruce, I have a conference call with Denali on the Perception 2 sensor. Reschedule it. Bruce, I really need to... Delay it, Anne. 
I'll be picking you up at 1800 hours. That's an order, Anne. 1800 hours, sharp. <laughs> yes, sir. Broken nose. 
nose again. <sighs> okay. Okay. Probably have to wait for the right moment. <sighs> These <sighs> zip ties are strong as hell. Probably have to break your wrist to free yourself. Alright, we're outnumbered. A hand to hand is likely not an option. Gotta find some kind of weapons. God. And and we'll, we'll need to be fast as possible. God. You'll be expecting an attack, so we'll need to improvise on the spot. Maybe can you please, Commander? Shut up. Commander, I'm trying to figure out our next move. After all that's happened, we can't simply let them get away. We? we? Who is we? They've risen up against us. They've got us zip-tied here like fools. We need to make things right. Oh. <laughs> Commander. <laughs> We've got to do something. <laughs> there it is again. Us. We. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? What? <laughs> if you hear our zoo, then make sure it looks like an accident. Damn sure. You remember me saying that to you? I, we need to come up with a plan of attack here. Oh. Do we now? Sir? I sent you on a mission to execute Paul Kirsch and Alina Torres. Top priority level mission. I asked you how it went. You remember your response? I... Hmm? Say it, Connor. Repeat your lie. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Seamless, you said. Commander, I was a little headstrong. I didn't... I, 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 I should have... Seamless. Bullshit. This is Khartoum all over again. Why does Paul Kirsch live? I am sorry, Tim. I... I felt... A quick death wasn't fitting enough. He didn't deserve it. Guess he didn't figure in the decreased air pressure? Weaker gravity? Jesus, you're stupid, Connor. I'm sorry, Tim. I'm an idiot, okay? <laughs> I'm a fool. I think you would have handled this properly. Imagine, if you'd done your job as ordered, where we'd be? Next moves, our next move is to die, and it's because of you, you shit. Two weeks. Two weeks, Pete. You'll be back to full mobility in no time, but for now, consider yourself out of the game. Now, as far as the colorization, do you want morphine or... Fuck the morphine, I can handle it. <laughs> we'll see about that. You'll feel it regardless. Surgery is going to sound and hurt worse than it actually is. No heavy lifting or EVAs for 14 days. Easy does it for the time being and taking a lot of fluids. Hey, Paul. Okay, uh, fractured seven and eight ribs on left side. Fracture on rib six on the right. Left knee shows two cracks in the patella and slight rupture of the articular cartilage. And the right horizontal lateral fracture um, across... Crippled, Chloe. Um. Yeah? You're broken up pretty thorough, but you aren't paralyzed. The ribs should be able to heal on their own, but the knees will need surgery. That's not necessary. If you're going to walk again, it is. Luckily, you're in the hands of someone who's performed reconstructive surgery on the knees before. If you need a hand, Chloe, I'm free. Count me in, too. That would be great. After surgery and post-op recovery, we'll hit the physical therapy full force. Therapy? I'll have to come up with some kind of conditioning program between surgery and PT to keep up your density, but yes, Paul, I've even got an idea for some braces when we cross that bridge. We'll operate tomorrow. Tomorrow? Maintaining bone density is critical, and so we haven't got a moment to lose. Wonderful. It should be fun. One. 
51. This is Rachel. I've returned to Earth. Repeat. I have returned to Earth. This is Rachel Yoshida trying to contact Mech T1 from Edwards Air Force Base. Repeat. This is Rachel Yoshida sending a transmission from Edwards Air Force Base. There are survivors. Repeat. There are survivors. Not many, but there are survivors. I'll remain here until I hear back. Rachel out. She sounds exhausted. <laughs> she traveled nearly 50 million miles across space to call us from Southern California. I think she's earned the right to be a little tired. How in the hell did she get to Edwards Air Force Base? I couldn't even begin to speculate. She called for Mech D1. Yeah, they launched before Mech T2 even landed. <sighs> So Rachel's made it. it. No mention of Fedor. You remember his condition back then. Perhaps... Yeah. Rachel's made it back, though. And there are survivors on... Andrew told me, and told me, and he told me... <sighs> How in the hell are there survivors? Who are they? How many? How have they been alive this long? <sighs> this changes things. How we proceed. Vasily, how long ago did we receive her message? Looks like uh, three hours ago. Three hours ago? Why did we now just get it? It was saved in our database the entire time. We were dealing with Tim and Connor. Shit. We we need to send a reply now. What do we tell her? I... I, I don't know. A return journey in the ERV. I don't like it, Walter. I know, Abby. This... this child... I don't think it can take months of cosmic radiation exposure. It's not good. At the moment, I don't see any other alternative. All crew, please report to the CC immediately. All crew to the CC. Verdict is in, I guess. Uh-huh. Because of this impending danger and the revelations brought up by your transmission, 
I've determined it would be in our best interests to use the three emergency return vehicles still here on the Martian surface to launch for Earth. So launch for Earth? We're going back? A close approach launch window is coming near, so we will jump on this opportunity to get back ASAP. We'll make the launch window. We're coming back to Earth. We're... We're coming back home. Please confirm receipt of transmission as soon as you can, and please give us a full report. It's good to hear your voice again, Rachel. Our line will always remain open. Commander Sam Flynn of Colony 1, over and out. Um, transmission sent. Don't you? We're going back to Earth. Are you serious? Really? Going back? Yes. We're going back to Earth. That comet poses a threat we cannot possibly manage. There are survivors on Earth. We have spacecraft that can get us back to Earth. It's a no-brainer. But there's a lot of work to get us there. And some unfinished business to attend to. Here it is. Tim Conrad, Connor Nye. They pose a vital security threat to our mission. We are going back to Earth. But there is no way in hell I'm going to subject these survivors to the likes of them. Hasn't the last 24 hours taught us anything? Chloe, I understand you. Truly, I do. You want the killing to stop. Though as long as they live, they remain threats. This is how the killing stops. Sam, do not... Facility, do... Nicole, take Tim and Connor to airlock 4, Sam! next to loading baby. Sam! Meet me there. Sam, do those. not do this! Pleasure, Commander. Commander Conrad, do something. We've got to stop this. Mission accomplished, sir. Seamless. Miss Coldren, stand up. On your feet, Connor. Nicole, stop! Stop this! Facility, we don't have to execute them! Chloe, we're done. You said what you Tim? needed to say. Tim, we need to focus. You're all gonna fuck your face! Shut up and walk, Facility. Connor.
have them restrained. They pose as much of a threat now as I do. We've won. They can't hurt us anymore. You don't have to do this. <sighs> Chloe, look at all the work you've got ahead of you with Paul. Think about his surgery and working with him through likely months of therapy. And think about all the time you're going to miss on other things and the detriments to your own health, cleaning up their mess. Think about the look on Alina's face as Connor was taking her down. Think about what was going through David's mind as Tim... No, Chloe. No need in reminding you about your crimes. What you had done is unimaginable. Executing them will not bring our friends back. Chloe, stand back or I'll have Nicole remove you. I can't believe this. Please, no. Commander Sam Smith, please come to the CC now. Commander Timothy Conrad, Lieutenant Connor and I, for your acts of violence and murder against your crewmates, you are condemned to death. I can only hope in these last moments you can find... <sighs> Farewell. Be ready to open the hatch after I've repressurized Nicole. All right. Sam, come to the CC immediately. Uh, stand by. Kaya, I'm kind of busy right now. Sam, you are needed in the command center right now. It's going to have to wait, Kaya. Give us... We've received a reply from Rachel. We need you in here now. Son of Play it on the damn intercom then, Kaya. <sighs> Opening the outer hatch in five. Do not come to Earth. Repeat, do not come to Earth. Emergency return vehicle 1. Earth orbit. September 26, 2057. Bullseye. Operate docking locks. Locking to orbit station. Stand by. Successful locking. Pressurizing now. Well, we made it. Indeed. You alright? I've given orders to abandon ship, with our 11-person crew using one of our abort capsules to link up with space station Hercules, and the remaining three to land near Jarvis Island. I hope that we get back operational power and communication soon. Ken Simpson, January 5th, 2057, 1622 hours. <sighs> Great. He's wrong, you know. There is operational power to the facility. What? The data on my screen is lying to me. We are ready to go. Huh. This doesn't make any sense. Oh well. I guess we'll take one of the personnel climbers down. I'll go get our things. Go down and power up climber 7. On my way. MECD Headquarters, this is Captain Rachel Yoshida calling from the Space Elevator Orbit Station. Repeat, this is Captain Rachel Yoshida of MECD-1 calling to you from the Space Elevator Orbit Station. Come in. <sighs> Worth a shot.
Shell Climber 7, descent, launch in 3, 2, 1. Personnel Climber 7 departing for Jarvis Island Surface Station. Time remaining on descent, 22 hours, 42 minutes. Please leave seat belts fastened for duration of trip. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your ride on the Minty Space Elevator. And we're off. You should get some sleep. I shouldn't be here, Rachel. It's been discussed, Fedor. Nada. The actions we take, good or bad, we must live with the consequences and look forward. Shouldn't have left. Twenty-two hours later, Mekti Space Elevator, Surface Station, Jarvis Island. Fifty feet. Thirty feet. Ten feet. Personnel climber seven secured. Uh, I'm running another diagnostic. Alright. Assistance with gravity acclimation procedures. You may now unbuckle your seat belt. Low Earth gravity. Blinking white arose in each aisle, which will direct you to the exit of the personnel climber 7 and make your way to Terminal 7 baggage claim. Welcome to Earth, and we thank you for riding the Mickey Space Elevator. Please visit us again. Same rating as before. You see that? Strontium, cerium, barium, tellurium? 37 Celsius. CO2 at point zero nine. Gravity acclimation is going to take a while, and the sun is killer. No. Take it slow, Fedor. Take Rachel. it. Rachel. We've been away so long. Let's just take our time. Mekti Headquarters, Tonopa. This is Fyodor Morozev from Mekti-1. My comrade Rachel Yoshida and I are at the Space Elevator Surface Station. 
attempting to re-establish communication. We have returned from Mars, and now we are trying to make contact with Mekti headquarters in Tanopa, Nevada. If you hear this transmission, please reply. Fedor Morosev, over and out. Hey, how are you doing? I feel worse than I look. <laughs> That's not very encouraging. What is this? Raided the hospital. Potassium iodide, Prussian blue, DTPA, DMSA, vitamins, retinoids, antioxidants, spiraling tablets. Good shit. And lots more where that came from. Rachel, these won't do much to improve my situation. Here, start swallowing. Hmm. Potassium iodide. Boy, how's your acclimation going? Yeah. You? Slow going, but going. We'll likely need a week or two before we get back to normal. Found the crew, I think. Or at least part of the surface crew. What's left of them. They were put in a row and covered with a tarp. Like a crude grave of sorts. Someone's been here since the GRB. It appears so. Why? What did they come here for? We abandoned everyone for this? I abandoned Nada for this? Never should have left, Rachel. Did you check any of the aircraft on the south side of the island? Yeah. Checked every jet, in every hangar. Electronics are fried. We're not flying anytime soon. I found a boat, though. A boat? The USS Tsunami. Small solar powered transport. Bats recharging right now. So, where do we go? Headquarters? Yeah, but we should probably make some stops along the way. There's someone out there. Someone who was here. Kiribati's nearest place with a sizable population. Not even a day's sail from here, too. I say we go there. Search for survivors, grab any additional supplies we can find. Then we'll make for Long Beach and route to HQ. Long Beach. We need to contact MECD-1 and let them know our status. And I'm sure your wife would like to hear your voice, right? She is still alive. The next day, USS Tsunami Personnel Transport Vessel, Jarvis Island, Pacific Ocean. How's this? I can wheel myself behind this desk. Engine's running. Hmm. Okay, Rachel. You've piloted a ship across interplanetary space. You can pilot this. Well, well, well. <coughs> What's that? Hey, Kurt! Well, I thought you'd never turn. Hey! Jesus. You're not Kirk Flanagan. Where's Kirk? It's a Sinto pal. One of those AI kids toys. Oh great. You've made a new friend. Surprised its electronics weren't fried in the burst. There were ads for these things everywhere. Hey, where's Kirk? Forward. I, I'm afraid I don't know, Sinto pal. I don't... My name is Mike. Mike, eh? Yeah, Mike. Who are you? Fedor. Fedor, huh? I've heard of a Fedor. Where's Kurt? I'm afraid I don't know, Mike. Wherever he is, I don't think he's coming back. Oh, man. I hope he's okay. My original friend was Jeff, but we'll only do his dad, Kurt. Then we got on this boat. Uh -huh. It's online. Lucky shit. Fedor, bring up the GPS and chart a course for Kiritamati Island. 
minute. What are you guys doing? Who is she? The course is charted. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is the USS Tsunami. The USS Tsunami. The USS Tsunami. Speaking is Rachel Yoshida, Navigation Specialist for MECD-1. I am with Fedor Morozov of MECD-1. We are currently departing Jarvis Island, Southwest Dock, setting out for Kiritamati Island, Kiribati. Coordinates are 0 degrees, 22 south by 160 degrees, 01 west. We're departing northeast. We seek any vessel of any size that hears this call to please accompany us. We will call on all available frequencies every hour on the hour. Please hear our call. <sighs> all right. Can you type this in case I lose the paper in an hour? Sure. Mech D1? I've heard of you guys. Kirk talked about you guys all the time. I knew I heard of a Fedor. You guys are astronauts, right? Going to Mars. Wait. What are you guys doing back here? Was Mars not all it's cracked up to be? Full speed ahead for Kiribati. Just over 1,600 hours local time, and we've got a bit over seven hours to cover 295 nautical miles. Should be docking close to midnight. Hey guys, hate to be a wet blanket, but if you'd like to continue talking with me, I could use a solar charge if you have time. Better? Oh. That is nice. Thanks, pal. Sure it's quiet here, isn't it? It was. Three days later, Kiribati. Been a long time since I've seen rain. It's been a long time since I've seen any of this. How long till Rachel returns? Uh, she's nearing the dock now. More supplies from the look of it. Hey, Fedor. Do you miss Mars? More than you understand. What do you miss most? My wife, Neda. Why did you leave? Good question. Does Neda miss you? Mm, yes. I, I'm not sure. I did not leave things on the best of terms. Why not just go back then? I don't think it's possible anymore. <sighs> There's no way to get back to the surface in one piece, especially in my condition. I am stuck here. Ugh, this acid rain smells like shit. The damn solar jeep broke down and stranded me nearly a mile away. Son of a bitch in gravity acquisition. Kept thinking my knees were gonna buckle under me with each step, too. Alright, Kira Damati to. Okay. There it is. When's the last time you sent out an SOS? I lost the track. <sighs> the door. We're supposed to be airing now, those every... I don't have the best memory in the world, but I think it was about 92, 93 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you, Synthopal. Hey, the name's Mike, Rachel. Long Beach is over 2,900 nautical miles away. No survivors? No. <sighs> Maybe we'll have better luck on the mainland. Perhaps. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is the USS Tsunami. The USS Tsunami. The USS Tsunami. 
Speaking is Rachel Yoshida, Navigation Specialist for MECT-T1. With me is my crewmate, Fedora Morozev. Coordinates are 1.984 by negative 157.312. We are currently heading out of Kiribati, due northeast for Long Beach Harbor. We seek any vessel that hears this call to please accompany us. We will call on all available frequencies every hour on the hour. Please hear our call. S Tsunami Pacific Ocean. Two days later. Is it me? Has there not been a single bird on this entire trip? It is not you, Mike. There are no more birds. We've only been here a week, Thor. Only a week. <laughs> Could have sworn it was six. Nevada, then I guess we'll have to carve out a niche for ourselves. A niche? Just play it by ear. If I can speak for myself, I'm happy you're here. At least the robot's happy. hearing such a large port so silent. Get used to it. I'm gonna look through the cars in that parking lot at the end of the pier. Hopefully there's one that's forgiving. Can you get our supplies ready? <sighs> Come on, baby, please work. The SUV's solar battery is taking a charge. Battery will need about five to six hours. We're stuck here until it's charged. We will be low on food soon. Yeah, I know. We'll raid some supermarkets in the morning after we grab more meds from the hospital. We've got enough room to load up on supplies on the way too. Great. I am going to look for something we can make fire out of, or, or something that will burn. It's too bad bones won't do, but with all the skeletons I'm finding. Fedor? We'll make it work. As you said, Rachel, carve out a niche, play it by ear, then live happily ever after. Is he all right, Rachel? <sighs> yeah, Mike. He's great.
that night. Now I'm hearing things. Exit 10 for Wilmington, then turn right on Wilmington. The hospital will be on your right. Everybody's still in their cars. GRB must have been immediate. Look on the bright side. More food and supplies for us. I don't understand. What's a GRB? This is so unreal. This is our reality. The last two people on Earth driving down the highway of corpses. There's exit 10. I see it. Should be enough room to get around these cars on the shoulder. Turn right onto Wilmington. After you turn right, Martin Luther King Hospital will be on your right. At the corner of Wilmington and 120th Street. Go ahead and stay with the car while I go in, okay? Why? No one will steal it. Fine. The Synthopal stays in the car. Hey, I may be a Synthopal, but my name is Mike. With pleasure. All right, if there's a first aid kit, we're taking it. Anti-radiation medication, any chemo treatments that are still intact, we're taking them. Anything we need, we're taking with us. After this, we'll find some breakfast, okay? Mm-hmm, understood. Come on, we've got work to do. This is our lives now? I am such a fool. concept of the broadcast loudspeaker is to broadcast to people. Kind of defeats the purpose if we used it. Oh god. Never thought I'd lie in a bed like this again. I never thought I'd be taking chemotherapy. It's helping to fight against the radiation, Fedor. Yes, because that is important at this juncture. My drip is done. I've been giving some thoughts to the future, Rachel. Oh, yeah? After we make it to headquarters, I want to find my own car and go for a drive up to Yosemite. To the half dome. And then what? Then I'll spend some time with myself. Think about the future. Contemplate my situation. Contemplate your situation? What? What does that mean? <sighs> Fedor, I'm not just gonna let you go off on your own and throw yourself off a mountain. Don't be stupid. After all we've been through. All we've been through? <coughs> what else is there to do, Rachel? We'll figure something out. What you're wanting to do, not an option. If that was our purpose, then we should have stayed on Mars. Yes. 
we should have stayed on Mars. But the people we love. What are we doing here? We should have turned it around. Why didn't we turn the ship around? Lights out, Fedora. No! Answer my question, Rachel. Why didn't you turn Tough the- Tough shit. Go to sleep. Try to off yourself on Mars. Now you want to do it on Earth? Why am I even surprised with you? hear anything. I definitely heard something. <sighs> you, you know, it could simply be a side effect of being back at Earth, reacting to the sheer silence of everything. You instinctually expect there to be a hustle and bustle sound at Los Angeles airport, but... I'm not hearing things, Fedor. I thought I was, but no. <sighs> Rachel. Rachel, come back inside. Get some sleep. Shut up! Shh. Rachel, we're not supposed to be around that acid rain without your suit on. The toxicity of the rain. You were just talking about throwing yourself off of a mountain, and now you're worried about my health? Quiet! Come on. Come on. Damn it. I'm not hearing things. I'm not. There's someone out there. Rachel, we need to load up on food before the six hour drive to headquarters tomorrow. I'm not hearing things. There's something out there. There needs to be something. Only canned goods. I would assume that's our safest bet. Once we get to HQ today, we'll need to raid their ration stockpiles. That stuff is definitely shielded. Oh. You all right? I think I'm feeling the effects of the chemo. Oh, oh. duh. I'm fine. I'm headed to the hygienic aisle. I guess we should get something to clean ourselves. Don't forget toothpaste and toothbrushes. Wouldn't hurt to clean the teeth you still have. Ugh. Right. Have you thought about what you are going to do yet? What I'm going to do? When? What do you mean? After we finish at headquarters. I... I haven't thought that far yet. I know I'm not going to kill myself, and I am not letting you do that to yourself either. I'll figure it out. I wish... <sighs> wish there was a way to get back to Mars, to Neda. Fedor... Abandoning her was the worst sin. Perhaps if I took the ERV back. If you took ERV-1 back to Mars, you'll die. Guaranteed. 
It's a plan, nonetheless. Oh, I hope you're back. After we finished up. After. Should be coming up on Lancaster in three miles. Did you know that Lancaster, California is the hometown of Judy Garland, Frank Zappa, and Chuck Yeager? Oh, thrilling. I'm finished with my treatment. Hungry? I could eat. Pull over. Let's eat. Then I want to drive for a bit. You deserve a break. I. I... Hey, grab that tablet from the dashboard. I want to look at the map again. Thanks. What are you in the mood for? Hmm. How's about that Russian soup? Russian soup it is. Okay. How about you take us to West Bishop, and I'll drive us the rest of the way into Tonopa. Fine by me. We never should have left, and I feel that we are paying the price for that error. <sighs> but if the comms dish is not destroyed from GRB, and if she is still alive, <sighs> hearing her voice may bring a slight respite. We'll get you in touch with your wife. We'll get the comms working. It's an insult to call this super Russian. My father Bogdan would roll in his grave. Oh, I can't open it. Still about five hours till we pull through the front gates, and it's almost thirteen hundred. What? So what is that? Attention. This is Scott Richmond at Edwards Air Force Base. Attention. This is emergency broadcast number one. We are currently held up at Edwards Air Force Base. There are 64 in our crew, 41 women, 23 men. We are in good health. Today is day 26 at Edwards Air Force Base. Any and all survivors that may hear this broadcast, please come to Edwards Air Force Base Command Post. Follow the sign. There will be another broadcast tonight a repeat of this exact broadcast in just a moment. Please, anyone out there, please respond. Did... you did hear it this time, right? I heard it. Who was that? Where did it... Attention, attention, attention. This is Scott Richmond at Edwards Air Force Base. Attention. This is an emergency broadcast, number 158. We are currently held up at Edwards Air Force Base. There are 64 in our crew, 41 women, 23 men. We're in good health. Today is 
day 26 at Edwards Air Force Base. Any and all survivors that are out there, please come to Edwards Air Force Base Command Post. Follow the sign. There will be another broadcast tonight and one final repeat of this exact broadcast in just a moment. Please, anyone out there, please respond. Scott Richmond. Scott Richmond. I know that name. Why do I know that name? TV host. Sure you got the wiring right this time? Hope so. Let's give it a whirl. Attention, this is emergency broadcast Cylinder battery charge test. Take seven. There are 64 in our crew, 41 women, 23 men. We are in good health today. Solar battery charge test. Any and all survivors that are out there. I think there's still a short somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'll do a visual scan of the cabling, starting at the panels, then work my way down. In just a moment, please, anyone out there, please. Man, any luck? Not yet, but we will get there. Captain Alvarez, I call you over for an update on last night. Unidentified vehicle approaching! Repeat! Unidentified vehicle approaching! The, the West Gate! The fuck? What? Unidentified vehicle approaching! Repeat! Unidentified vehicle approaching the West Gate! Scott, tell the vehicle to approach the command post. You read, use a loudspeaker. The Approaching fuck? SUV, we have a visual on you. Maintain on Rosamund Boulevard, then take a left on Airman's Way. <sighs> oh my god. We'll meet you there. Oh Man, my come god. Come on. Come in. CP now. Yeah. Yeah. I seem to. I cannot believe this. Slow down, Richard. Almost there. You did say 64. Yeah. <sighs> Might as well say hello. That would be the courteous Turn thing to do. Off. Eva Rachel? Murphy, shit! You're alive? Rachel Yoshida, what? What are you doing here? We're back, or Mecky one? Who are oh, they? Oh, Shouldn't they be us? Rachel Yoshida and Fedor Morozov? What the hell? What the hell are you guys doing here? Holy shit! How many are they? Rachel? Omar Alvarez? Fedor? I, you're I don't back. get it. How are you all here? Us? How the hell are you here? You're supposed to be on Mars! What, what happened? Everyone, please! Welcome to Edwards Air Force Base. I am Commander Zhao Li of Guanghan Gongwan. Guanghan? Guanghan? The moon base? The moon base. The Chinese moon base? My lord, how the hell are you, are you in California? Here? Right. How are you here? <sighs> After four months on the moon, I gave the order to evacuate Guanghangong. We arrived at Hercules, and amongst the bodies of the crew, we also found the proof of the gamma ray burst. We docked with the elevator orbit station, but the operational power was knocked out, leaving us the only alternative, re-entry. But it appears the GRB altered the air pressure. Piloting the shuttles became impossible and I gave the order to abort. Three of the four shuttle crews aborted in time. The fourth, including administrator Dario Gidas, crashed down in the ocean. 
22 were lost. <sighs> we got the fusion reactor going again, which brought back operational power. Right. After a week on Jarvis, we decided to load up on a cargo ship and head east. Nearly five months we searched Ecuador, Panama, all along the Mexican coast. We finally decided to dock in San Diego. Each single place we went. Well, you guys are in LA, you saw. Yeah. We began moving north until we set up a base of operations here. I have been sending teams out in solar vehicles every day, scrounging for food and water and supplies, and broadcasting mayday calls, just hoping someone would hear. You weren't hearing things after all, Rachel. Why here? There are two solar-powered cargo jets here we are working on fixing up. The GRB knocked out their electronics, but they're not completely wasted. Hmm. Once airborne, we will be able to conduct global recon and supply flights. That is a good plan. These teams you send out for supply runs. Yeah? How far out do you send them? Fresno, Los Angeles, San Diego, all over really. Hmm. How do you keep in contact? Luckily, Edwards has several long-range emergency ham radios. We connect to the big comms dish. Works out great, actually. Highly impressive, Commander. We... Rachel, what's wrong? What's up? What big comms dish? Of course. I'm not sure what you want to do with it. Okay, now put in the coordinates. What are you doing? Excellent, excellent. Okay, now the frequency. All right. What are Where's you? the mic? Does this headset work? Yeah, it does. Shouldn't you first check the- Mech D1, Mech D1. This is Rachel, I've returned to Earth. Repeat, I have returned to Earth. This is Rachel Yoshida, trying to contact Mech-T1 from Edwards Air Force Base. Repeat, this is Rachel Yoshida, sending a transmission from Edwards Air Force Base. There are survivors. Repeat, there are survivors. Not many, but there are survivors. I'll remain here until I hear back. Rachel out. Now what? Now we wait. For how long? If there's someone there, if it's an open signal, 10, 20 minutes. If not, let's walk outside for a bit. And you can tell me exactly how you two came to be at Edwards Air Force Base. back to Mechti headquarters when we heard the message on the loudspeaker. I see. Huh. You've had quite a journey, to be sure. I should say the same for you. To be able to survive through all of this for so long, definitely a feat. Why did you come back? Cowardice. No. Cowardice? It, it was... Essentially, yes. We faced immense adversity and we ran. Yes. Cowardice. It's a bit more complicated than that. Huh. <sighs> so what's next? I mean, what's your plan? I... We're playing it by ear. We're glad you are here. Yeah? Of course. We found you. You're welcome to join us if you want. Sounds enticing. You have been wanting to carve out a niche for us, Rachel. Yeah, maybe. 
our original plan was simply getting to HQ and trying to get in touch with MECD-1. The supply stockpiles at HQ are more than enough for Fedora and I to live on for 10 lifetimes. Better comm systems there too. You haven't come across anyone in all the months you've been on Earth? Nope. Hell, we've been as far west as Salt Lake City and as far north as Vancouver. No one. Until you two showed up today. My god. The priority at the moment is getting the solar cargo jets repaired and powered up. Any hot food left from you and Fedor? Nikki. How's Fedor? How was his test? No real change. Advanced radiation sickness. But if he sticks with his medication, he could buy some real time. It's a, it's a, message. a message? Transmission from Colony One. Colony, colony One? What's Colony One? Holy shit, they're alive! Colony One. Commander I Sam Flynn this. calling Edwards Air Force Base from the command center of Colony One in Amazonas Planitia oh, on Mars. They built it. More they actually fucking built it. They survived. How did they survive? Mac D2 has arrived. 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 They are alive? Some others along the way. What? Shh. There are 14 of us left. What? Colony One is nearly complete and we shortly have reported sprouts in our greenhouse. But due to a security issue, the greenhouse needed to be depressurized. Security Here, issue? We received your transmission and apologize for our delay in response. We are happy to hear that you are alive and we're still struggling to contemplate that you found survivors after a gamma ray burst. If you can confirm the status of Fedora Morozov, Nada and I and the rest of us need to know. Nada. We need to know how you made it back. She's alive. Rachel, we Detected a comet heading for Sinai Planum. What? Won't strike for a long time, but when it does. A comet? Sinai, what? Where? Where? Wh because of this impending danger and the revelations brought up by your transmission, I've determined it'd be in our best interests to use the three emergency return vehicles still here on the Martian surface what? to launch from Earth. Is he serious? Wait, who is that? A close approach launch window is coming near, so we will jump on this opportunity to get back ASAP. We'll make the launch window. We're coming back to Earth. We're... We're coming back home. No. They're coming back! Please confirm we're seeing transmission as soon as you can. They must not and come please back give us a full report. It's good to hear your voice again, Rachel. Our line will always remain open. Commander Sam Flynn of Colony 1, over and out. Well, God. Damn. No. They are launching for Earth. They cannot come back. That means we have a lot of work to do. No. They're Perhaps German. we should relocate to Mekti's headquarters. They, they can't. We will need to help draw up a flight plan and a means for bringing them from Jarvis Island they to the mainland and back then here. back here. Good, Captain. It appears Rachel is working on establishing a line of communication. Do not come to Earth. Repeat, do not come to Earth. Rachel. What did... Why did you say that? <sighs> Colony One, this is Rachel Yoshida calling from Edwards Air Force Base. Today is October 10th, 2057. Forgive me for the abrupt response. Let me elaborate. Fedora's alive and is being treated for his radiation poisoning. We found 64 survivors here at the base. They were all on board the Chinese moon base when the GRB hit on January 1, out of the line of fire. Fedora and I arrived back on Earth two weeks ago via the space elevator. With me is CNSA Commander Zhao Li, who has successfully led the survivors from the South Pole of the Moon to Earth. Commander Sam Flame, this is Commander Zhao Li. It is a surprise to hear that you and your crew are alive on Mars. Hmm. We're all stunned. Commander, the only living creatures we've come across are these 64 men and women. 
There were concentrations of fallout toxins in the air. We've experienced downpours of acid rain on multiple occasions. The surface temperature is considerably hotter than expected, likely due to atmospheric decay brought on by the GRB. The ozone layer has been severely decimated. Vegetation is non-existent. What are you doing? Commander Flynn, we acknowledge the issues you are dealing with on Mars, and we recognize that you are in a lucky situation with the close approach launch window. <sighs> but you'll be trading one bad situation for another. Rachel. As much as it pains me to say this, I urge you to not come back to Earth. Captain, move away from the coast. You must not come back here, Sam. You cannot come back here. Colony One, this is Fedor Morosev. You cannot leave Mars because we are coming to you, all of us. What? Colony One, Amazon is Planitia. Mars, Gear 3 and mech 4 are still docked at Hercules. Huh. We can use those rockets to blast off for Mars. All of us. Together. Maybe they're... Uh, that could work. Command. Absolutely not. Is that? So we go to Mars, and we land. Then what? What do we do after that? I don't know. We carve out a niche for ourselves. Figure out a way to survive. It's impossible for door. Out of the question. Sam, we will head north to Mechti headquarters in Nevada shortly, where we will have better communications after we power up the facility and access to better food and supplies. We can work on a mission plan then. Sure, this is nonsense. It's ridiculous. If you're there, Nia, I love you, and I miss you terribly. Oh, Fedor. <laughs> the next time you'll hear from us will be from Mission Control in Tonopah. Edwards AFB, over and out. Huh. So, this changes things. Sure as hell does. He's actually alive. The return journey is scrap then. Maybe. We need to think of other options. Uh, Meg! Walter? That's it! What are you doing? MEGs. Had to look all the way ahead to Meg 12's mission plan to find it, but... If we're gonna be staying, and if we're gonna be accommodating over 60 more people... We need to solve the living space issue. We need to achieve sustainability with limited materials. Not to mention deal with your comment. Okay, Walter. How do we house 78 people? I... I don't know. How to build homes for nearly 80 people? How to successfully bring them from Southern California on Earth all the way down to Amazonas Planitia? How to deal with the comet and most difficult, how to terraform Mars? Terraform? Yeah. If we stay on Mars, we need to terraform the planet. It's a ton of work. Not sure if we'll be able to pull it off, but we need to figure that out soon. At this point, I don't think we have much choice. Vasily, come with me. We're going to move Tim and Connor to the observatory for the time being. What? The observatory, sir. Why not just need as many hands on this mission as we can get? That even means them. God damn it! What's he doing? I... Who knows, Nicole? Now what? Now? Do we figure out a way to pull off the impossible? The next time you'll hear from us will be from Mission Control in Tonopah. Edwards AFB, over and out. Fedora, we're not doing this. Call them back. They were able to successfully grow crops. There are too many volatile compounds in the air and soil here. Don't forget the temperature, too. Earth is much too dangerous, Commander. We're staying here. 
We've been through way too much over the past year to abandon everything. And for what reason? It could work, though. Colony One has been constructed on Mars, a permanent habitat on another planet. Do you know how much work and ingenuity goes into something like Colony One? When we launched, the crew was as good as dead. Yet they are now living in a fully operational colony with the ability to produce sustenance. If they could do that with limited resources, Commander, have you ever been trained in terraforming? My crew has. Bador has. I've been trained in terraforming procedures. Hell, some of the people here have some knowledge. Then why not terraform on Earth? It doesn't work that way, Commander. Fedor is right. We need to leave for Mars. This has bad idea written all over it. If we stay on Earth, we're going to be scrounging around like nomads until we eventually succumb to the toxins we're breathing in each second. We can do better than that. We now have a goal. Something to plan for. I do not like this. Until a better alternative can be found, I will allow you to go ahead. But our own objectives that I order still stand. Understood. Fedora and I are going to Tonopa, Nevada tomorrow. We'll power up HQ and begin work on a return journey mission. Anyone who wants to come along, we could use the help. I don't like this, Omar. I have a bad feeling. Yeah, me too. But do we have any good options left? There's 66 people on Earth that need to come back here. We have two Maya rockets docked at Space Station Hercules. Operational status unknown. An MMLHV spacecraft was constructed to sustain a 16-person crew in every Maya rocket. The two landers are MECD-3 Scorpion and MECD-4 Centipede. That's 34 left out. They'll have to double up in the ships. No way of getting around that. Right. Two launches, then, with packed spacecraft. Too much weight. That'll complicate the landing sequence for sure. What about the tarantula? The... It should still be in Mars orbit. And other than the faulty release valves, it should be operational, right? I suppose so, yes. From what I can remember. Let's include the tarantula then. That's a 48 person total capacity. Two launches and three manned Mars landings with virtually untested, untrained crews. What about supplies? These ships are going to be so packed with humans, there won't be much room for anything else. Figure it out soon enough. We'll also need to come up with a plan for this comet. All of this is for shit if we cannot find an effective way to neutralize that damn thing. We'll figure that out too. Okay. Walter? Pete, what you got? Mostly support documents and procedures for Megs. No real blueprints or anything needed for construction. <sighs> Once Rachel and Fedora get HQ back online, they can open up the terraforming mission database and send us anything we'll need. <sighs> we'll need to figure out a solution soon for transferring a vast amount of supplies for these refineries, if we're serious about this whole endeavor. For the level of power we'll need to match the scale of atmosphere generation, there's no other way to fuel these gigantic electrolysis reactions than with fusion reactor facilities. Those require a lot of supplies to be transferred to Mars. <sighs> okay. I'm not saying it can't be done, just a lot of uh, kinks to straighten out. Even if we find some way to transport, we better start repurposing everything we've got here. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Luke? Call me a snack. But I don't see how you can find a supply craft large enough to send everything you need for multiple make refineries. The electrolysis chamber's got to be at least ten times the size of our command center. Every single detail we've brought on Mars will be repurposed for creating these refineries. Which will mean dismantling Colony One. 
46-day transit after launch. The Scorpion will house the crew at launch, then they split in half, with half of the refugees moving over to the Centipede during transit, though there will be a steady flow in and out for simulations and the like. Refugees? That's what they are, right? <sighs> I guess so. Okay. How to land? You're gonna have a 66-person crew in a gigantic space station packed with supplies. 70-person crew, not 66. 70? Almost none of these people have any experience with Mars landing procedures. Rachel and Fedora will train and simulate as best they can, but with the stakes as high as they are, it'd be better if we have more experienced people landing. What? We will launch both ERV-2 and ERV-3 to Martian orbit to dock with a tarantula lander. Walter and Nada in ERV-2, you and I in ERV-3. We'll dock, make necessary repairs, and once the refugees arrive in orbit, we split everyone into three ships and use these updated landing sequences. Basically, what I've done is accounted for the additional weight. Hmm. Nada supplies. That's a lot of tonnage you're going to be dropping through paper-thin skies. Which means we'll be breaking up the station into its individual modules, and using a combination of different re-entry mechanisms. ERV engines, ERV thrusters, Maya rocket thrusters, parachutes, hypercones, and an MGN. MGN? A magnetic guidance network. A grid of magnets perfectly placed in this valley, 330 kilometers to the northwest. We send the capsules down in batches, making sure that adjacent sections of the magnetic grid are not powered at the same time to avoid any interference. During the landing sequence, when the thrusters are burning full, an EM tether descends down from the supply batch, links, and reels the supplies in. The Colony 1 CC here will act as surface mission control, and the CCs in the three landing ships will be a base of operations for the supply drop. Batch by batch, we send down capsules of supplies until they're all safely on the surface. <sighs> a bit far-fetched, Walter. It will long ago landing a building-sized spacecraft on Mars sounded ridiculous. Until we did it. Where are you planning on getting all these entry systems and magnets? Make these stockpiles at Tonopa. We remove the thruster engines and main boosters from the ERBs to use as landing thrusters. And the magnets? We forge those. Forge magnets. How so? Create a controlled magnesium fire. Controlled magnesium fire. Then hammer together in situ iron, copper, and nickel deposits and iron, copper, and nickel deposits. From the Olympus Mons eruption. It's incredibly likely there are deposits in the lava tubes and fissures left from the eruption we can extract and forge into magnets. Perhaps somewhere the wasp went down. And you are convinced you can do this. Yes. I'll need help, of course. Running the forge and creating magnets might actually be a good job for Tim to do. If you're still planning on keeping him around. <sighs> what else you guys got? The Comet. We think we found a potential solution. Okay. The South Pole Thermonuclear Array. The SPTNA. What? Why? Over 1,100 4-megaton thermonuclear explosives buried in the ice in Planum Austral, ready for detonation as part of MECD's terraforming protocol. Before we eventually detonate the array, I propose we extract five, maybe six bombs, strap them on ERV-4, and send it on a one-way trip to intercept the bastard. If it doesn't destroy the comet, it'll clearly blow it off course. A thermonuclear intercept. That's right. And you're suggesting a drive to the South Pole to get these nukes? That's the gist of it. You're serious? All right. I trust you guys. Draw up some more in-depth mission plans. Transmission from Edwards Air Force Base. Colony 1, this is Commander Jiao Li. Sure, this time you got it right. Yes, Omar. Go ahead and fire it up. Whew. 
Solar battery charger test, take nine. Guess not this time. Hold, hold Maybe. on. Give it a minute. Commander, good morning, Rachel. Here's your crew. I have already given out orders, and they're going to meet you with some trucks near the Human Resources Test Center up the road. Thank you, Commander. <laughs> well, well. Looks like I was right, Omar. It's working? It's working. I'll be damned, Ben. Only took you nine tries. Good job, Ben. Your crew should be ready to go within the hour. Thank you, Commander. I am highly suspicious of this operation. If anyone gets in any danger, or if anything convinces me to put a stop to this, I will. Anything goes wrong. We are staying put. End of story. Crystal, we'll call you when we arrive. Day, Gemini 2nd, Gear 238, Research Laboratory, Colony 1. No problems with the data dumps. Good wind's been uploading from HQ. Nothing to report. It feels nice to finally be back in contact with Earth. I hear that. Ah, Pete. Oh, fine. Stab wound is healing, but it likes to remind me that it's there. Terraforming protocol. <sighs> There are several milestones we'll need to meet in regards to terraforming Mars. The main objective is creating a controllable global warming reaction planet-wide. We need large-scale emissions of greenhouse gases, as well as large-scale injection of both Earth's atmosphere and ozone into the Martian skies. Amongst seemingly endless other needs. As discussed, uh, MECTI's terraforming operations are centered around Mars Ecopoesis Generators, or MECs. Giant atmosphere creating refineries based on fusion powered electrolysis reactions. The MEGs require an energy input of 490 petawatts in order to create enough atmosphere to vent out and hopefully stay. The amount of fusion reactors we have at our disposal would dictate how many MEGs we are able to construct. MECD had dropped capsules for Colony 1 through 4 before MECD 1 ever launched from Earth. Then there are fusion reactors powering the Tarantula, Scorpion, and Centipede spacecraft. Don't forget the fusion reactor inside of Space Station Hercules. That's only eight. At some point, I'd like to send a recon mission to the ruins of the Wasp. If the Olympus Mons eruption didn't destroy the reactor there, then we've got nine. Eight or nine meg refineries won't be enough to terraform Mars, but we might be able to bring over enough materials to construct more. Might being the key word. We're gonna need a lot of supplies. Good thing Space Station Hercules is larger than six aircraft carriers. We should be able to fit more. Uranus Dorsum, Cassini Crater, Ares Vallis, Tempe Terra. What is this? Meg sites from Mechti's directory. There are also the landing sites for Mechti missions 10 through 38. MECTI was planning for 28 MEG refineries with a manned crew landing at every site. MECTI had planned for these 28 MEGs to get the planet terraformed within a century, give or take a decade. It'll be a longer process with less, but if Nicole's intercept mission can bat the comet away, then time is irrelevant here. Sure. As far as fuel for these refineries, some of the atmospheric agents we need for the electrolysis reactions can be found here on Mars. Some may require supplementation with supplies from Earth, but the MEGs have recycling devices that extract a percentage of the exhausting atmosphere for reuse. What atmospheric agents will we need to bring back from Earth? Nitrogen, neon, helium, methane, water vapor, hydrogen, and krypton. Uh, that seems like a lot. Continue, Vasily. <clears throat> As I was saying, 15% of the generated atmosphere we create in these refineries will be recycled as fuel for further electrolysis reactions. In-situ atmospheric agents include carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. 
Lumex will also perform the task of creating ozone for the breakdown and restructuring of both carbon monoxide and CO2. Our first step will be making a prototype electrolysis chamber so we can begin tests to establish the correct formula for generating our atmosphere. Huh. That's it? <laughs> yeah. There's some answers we're still looking for, like how to deal with decreased gravity and air pressure, but well, it's a start, at least. Yeah, I hope so. Medical Bay, Colony 1, Gemini 3rd, Year 238. Uh, easy. Easy. Uh, oh, Jesus. It'll be a while before you're running marathons again, Paul. The wheelchair is fine, Chloe. I'm fine. In addition to laying out these meg refineries, we also need to consider where all these people will live and their eventual ancestors. The human race never survived by staying in one place and hoping for the best. We need to spread out. To increase our already weak odds at survival, we will need to split up. These meg sites. This is where we'll need to build them. Build what? Towns. Each meg facility will have a town printed and constructed around them. Vasily and Luke here are developing a heating element for the construction printers to keep the sulfur concrete filament from freezing. We'll use those printed structures to lay the groundwork for settlements all over Mars. What do you guys think? Is this doable? It's a lot of work, but I don't see any issue. It's very doable, Commander. What structures do we print in all these Martian towns? First will come transportation. Uh, I've drawn up a schematic that will attach our smaller grade printers to a few non-pressurized rovers. It calls for converting the printer into a remote-operated sintering machine using the uh, regolith on Mars as a filament to pave roads between settlements. It's a slow process but it can run in the background while we work on other objectives. The ability to get from one town to the other with ease is key, so... All right. Meanwhile, we will begin printing operations for these settlements. Our designs call for laying out ECLSS infrastructure and greenhouses using printed ice and gel filaments. Then will come the meg refinery itself, followed by the fusion reactor, electrical and comms facilities, hospital, residential, school, supply depots, so on and so forth. A town, basically. How long until you have these printers ready to go, Luke? Less than a month. <sighs> Sounds promising. Look at these residential structures. Each building will be created to house 200 individuals. And as the situation requires it, we'll build even more. We're planning for an entire race of humans here, and so we need a longer-term plan. Which will lead to diversity. For the past few weeks, I've been designing the framework for a population protocol for Mars. Of course, I've needed to update it based on recent revelations. Let's hear it. Planned pregnancies are not permitted until specific prerequisites are met. A town has to be fully constructed and at full power. Two rounds of crops harvested in the town's greenhouse, ECLSS at full strength, meg refineries fully operational. So what you're saying is, not for some time. Right, not for a while. But if we're going to have babies on Mars with the intention of raising them into adults, this is how you make it happen. Fair enough. In the event of an unexpected pregnancy, abortions are left to the discretion of the parents. Yet if a child is carried to term, the potential mother's EVA abilities shall be revoked until the child reaches one year old. Unless it's an emergency. No pregnant mothers can go outside and be subjected to the surface radiation until the child is already born and healthy. During that time, they will perform administrative and support duties within the town. Common sense as I see it. Uh-huh. Artificial insemination protocol? Right. All of 
of us will need to donate samples of DNA, egg, and sperm. Unfortunately, that even includes Tim and Connor. This is how we promote genetic diversity. Lovely. Every hospital in every town shall contain a frozen vault containing 50 individual samples of each human in each vault, and 50 mixed samples per vault. And in the planned 28 sites we're eyeing, that results to 1,428 samples per human, and over 112 total samples per town. That's, um, diverse. And it could be enhanced even more. What do you mean? Well... There is likely still intact genetic material in the bodies of those we've buried outside the colony. What? Chloe, please do not be suggesting what I think you're suggesting. It's an awful request, but it will increase our chances exponentially. Orlando and Jennifer's bodies also likely retain some genetic material I can use. Aha. Uh-huh. Hell, I'm, I'm giving the go-ahead for a 5,500-kilometer nuke extraction EVA to the South Pole. <sighs> Whatever you need, Chloe. Understand, I'm not making this request lightly. Of course not. Desperate times. <sighs> Continue. Once the towns are up and running, we'll hold a lottery. One woman, once a year, one per town be randomly selected for artificial insemination. If she has a romantic partner, she will obviously not be subjected to an artificial insemination. I know this seems cruel, but expanding our population is mandatory. Yeah. Desperate times. One woman, once a year, will be randomly selected. A mandatory lottery. For forced burrs. Mm-hmm. My it appears that way. Oof. I understand the why. You need an organized, safe plan for building up the population, including everything else. If it's necessary, then I guess it needs to happen. Jesus. I guess... I guess we trust that they know what they're doing and that they wouldn't go down this road unless it was absolutely paramount. Better be worth it. Great. What are the refugees on Earth up to today? I spoke with Jane Goodwin at headquarters. They're compiling a master supply inventory that'll draw from to load up into space station Hercules. Commander Lee and her crew should have their two solo cargo jets ready for takeoff soon. Once they're up and running, I've directed them to visit three facilities with seed samples we'll need. The Millennium Seed Bank in West Sussex, the Global Seed Vault on Svalbard Island in Norway, and the World Vegetable Center in Taiwan. Most of the supplies can be allocated from Mekdi stockpiles in Nevada, but we need a varied selection of crops to grow with seeds that are unsealed vaults underground that have likely been spared by the GRB. Got it. Genetic diversity. Whew. Let's get everyone together in the CC. Captain Wen, call Commander Lee. Let her know we have arrived and we are headed to the fusion reactors now. Commander Lee, this is Captain Mei Wen. We've made it safely to headquarters and are heading to the fusion reactor to get the power back on. It's weird. Being back here after so long. After so much has happened. We need to get the fusion reactors repaired and restarted. 
Once we've restored power, we need to get our comms back up and running, and then begin a supply inventory. You are on speaker, Commander Lee. Captain Yoshida, Rachel? Yes, Commander. I spoke with Walter Lunston to get more information. The close approach launch window will be arriving in 49 days. 49 days? 49 days, Commander? That's it? Confirmed. 49 days. That's less than two months away. And the launch window will only be open for two weeks maximum. So... They said 49 days, then we have 49 days. Acknowledge, Commander. Thank you. Headed for the fusion reactor. Commander, 49 we... days. Jesus. Yes, Commander. Come on, let's go. Colony 1, Amazon is Planitia. Mars. I've heard all propositions, and there are several potential roadblocks, but I trust that in time we will find solutions. Here are your assignments and objectives. <clears throat> Abby Murdoch will be in charge of Earth-Mars launch operations. She'll be the lead architect of the flight plan and will provide aeronautical and astronautical assistance to our friends on Earth as they construct this giant launch vehicle. You'll be an acting flight director during all manned and unmanned landing procedures. That I can do, Commander. You'll also be assisting Chloe in building up her population protocol. It's quite a large plane, but due to your pregnancy restricting you from EVA duties, this compensates. No problem at all. Nada. First off, you'll be the point person on the emergency return vehicles. Make sure all the carbon dioxide fuel conversion devices are operational. Make sure the ships themselves are prepped and ready for launch. You'll drop flight plans on the ERVs, launch procedures, tarantula docking procedures, etc. You'll be stationed on the tarantula and will assist in landing operations. I... I will, Commander? Yes. You're gonna need to brush up in MMLHV controls as much as you can. Pete, Abby, and Walter will assist as needed. You'll also be working on allocating materials needed for constructing Walter's magnetic guidance network and help extract materials for the MEG refineries. Yes, it will be done. Nicole? Yes? Assist Walter in designing his magnetic guidance network for the supply drops and assist in meg designs and construction. You'll be the pilot of the tarantula with Nada as your CDR during landing. No problem. But first, I'm assigning you to lead a long distance retrieval EVA in Master Rover 3 down to Planum Astrail. You will extract five explosives from the South Pole Thermonuclear Array to be used on the Comet Intercept mission. I'm sending Vasily and Connor with you on the EVA. Understood, Nicole? You're sending Connor, sir. Yes. Connor. We might as well put him to some use. You will need Do to be- you honestly think it's a wise move to send him? Connor and I goes in the EVA. Begin charting a course. Moving on. Yes, sir. Specialist Tache, you're in charge of 3D printing operations for these settlements we're gonna build. Upgrade and convert all four construction printers to use this heated sulfur concrete as a filament. I'm also charging you to adapt these road paving centering rovers. Acknowledged, Sam. I also need you on mag duty, and you'll aid assist in their construction, testing, what have you. Kaya Osen, your lead urban designer for the permanent settlements Luke will be printing, conjointly with assisting the mag design build operations. You'll assist Luke in printing operations, concrete production, and helping create Pete's electrolysis prototype. Of course, you'll also keep maintaining clear lines of contact with Earth. I can do that, Sam. Paul? I need you to drop the flight plan and procedures for the Comet Intercept mission. Walter can assist in the observatory as needed. You'll also be assisting Abby, Nicole, Nada, and Walter in all flight, landing, and propulsion-related activities. Copy. Walter, the supply drop procedures and the magnetic guidance network. Assist Abby with their flight plans and help Nada with the ERVs. You'll command Mech-T3's Scorpion lander with Rachel as the pilot. 
Anything else, Sam? Uh, let's see. Um, Chloe Hook, population protocol. Keep building that up. Assist Kaya with urban design, Walter with his MGN construction, and aid the people on Earth with supply allocation. Sounds good. Pete Ross, I'm putting you in charge of the Mars terraforming protocol. You'll lead the MEG design build team and we'll be creating the MEG test chamber for electrolysis testing. You'll also assist aid in urban design, printing operations, and assist with the construction of these sintering machines. Oh, that's all. Understood, Sam. Got it. That leaves the silly. You're going on the thermonuclear extraction EVA with Nicole and Connor. After you return, you'll be in charge of assisting in sulfur concrete production, assisting also in 3D printer operations, the magnetic guidance network, and MEG refineries. Whoopee, Commander. I will oversee the progress and completion of all mission objectives and lending a hand whenever needed. I will also launch in an ERV with Nicole, and when the time comes for landing, I will act as pilot in MEG-D4 Centipede Lander, with Zhao Li commanding. I... I understand you're frustrated with me for halting Tim O'Connor's execution. However, there are 80 of us left, attempting to pull off something that requires millions to achieve. This is our last chance. And in order to make that work, we need as many hands as we can possibly utilize. They will be kept under restraints when they are not at work. I'm not asking you to be happy with my decision, but the less people we have working on these tasks, the more uncertain its success. Paul, brief Tim and Connor on their assignments. It would mean a lot to them coming from you. Got it. For the rest of you, we've got a lifetime of work to do. No time like the present. October 14th, 2057. MECTI Headquarters. Tanova, Nevada. Jesus. Welcome to Metke Supply Depot 1. The size of this place. This warehouse and the 280 others extend over one kilometer into the mountains from here in Tonopah, all the way to Highway 50 near the town of Austin. I suspect they had plans to build hundreds more of these things down the road. Mechti's landings never really had the chance to get going in full, so I suspect every depot is packed to the gills. Leslie it may look overwhelming, but thankfully Mecky made an awfully yeah, good directory, and there are stations all over the place running on a network. How many? 280 of these things? Yes, he just powered it on. Most of what we'll need are in these depots. Most of what we need? Nearly 300 kilometers of loaded supply depots, and we still don't have everything here? Yeah, shocking as it is, Mecky didn't have much in terms of seed specimens. Global seed banks had the best samples, so gotcha. Mecky obviously went that avenue rather than building up their own. Copy that, yeah. Well, we better get back to it, Jane. Thanks. What's up? Kaya's sent out updated supply lists, construction procedures, that kind of thing. They sure seem to be updating a lot. With what we're trying to pull off? I'd hope so. Well, and Commander Lee reported that the Phoenix One cargo jet's ready for takeoff, so they're just gonna test it at dawn and land it here. Phoenix One? That's appropriate, I guess. They're sure it's ready to fly? Well, they've run tests on the systems in and out, and taking it up is the only thing left, so. <laughs> I hope they're right. Wow, they're finally gonna fly it? What seed banks are we going to? Svalbard, Millennium, and a vegetable seed vault in Taiwan. Sure is a long flight in untested skies, but... <sighs> Network. Walter's what? What? What needs guidance? The landing craft. 
humans on Earth, they're coming to Mars. All of them. Wow. Looks like you're going to have your hands full, Lieutenant Nye. In a few weeks, you'll accompany an EVA with Commander Flynn to Tartarus Montez to retrieve medical supplies and the bodies of Orlando DeLuca and Jennifer Simmons. Yeah, that was a great move, eh, Tim? Understood, Paul. Connor Nye. You will accompany Nicole and Vasily to Planum Austral for thermonuclear explosive extraction from the SPTNA for the use on the Comet Intercept mission. All right. All right. You hear that, Tim? You get to slave around hammering magnets together while I give Brio work. You sure you want someone as incompetent as Connor and I on a precarious mission like that? You might fuck up yet again and cause the entire South Pole to go up while you guys are down there. Yet he would be dead. Have fun hammering metal all day, dickhead. After you return from the extraction EVA, you'll join Tim in the forge creating magnets for Walter's MGN. <laughs> Your first assignment, though, we're having the two of you go outside to dig up the bodies of David Stern, Andrew Wood, Jackie Wood, Elena Torres, and James Wilson. What? Why are we digging up graves? Sam is giving the two of you an olive branch that none of us would ever consider offering. The sensible thing to do would be showing gratitude by doing the work you're ordered to do, or maybe he changes his mind. Gratitude? <laughs> Fuck off, man. Will you crippled ass out of here? You know, Connor, you beat me. I might never walk again. One day, karma's gonna come knocking. Never for an instant think that you'll ever walk out of this. Rachel. Hey, Rachel. How are you? You cannot sleep either? It's six in the morning, Fedor. 6.08 Pacific time, to be exact. It... it is. <laughs> I've completely lost track. Waiting for confirmation on the latest MEG data dump from Colony One. Excellent. About to meet up with May and Danny to go over the latest updates to Abby's flight plan. 
How's the chemo? Uh, about as enjoyable as chemo can be. What are these? ID badges on some bodies I found in a hallway downstairs. Bruce Farley, astronomy advisor. I remember this man. Who was the woman he was with? Ann Oliver. They were together when the GRB hit. In each other's arms. At least they weren't alone. I can't imagine what it was like when it hit here. Just in an instant. Gone. Turned upside down. Put you in kind of a funk. Colony one to headquarters. Fedor, we confirm retrieval and successful download of Meg data dump and supply list. I'm sending overseed bank requests now, and before bed, I'll send out the Admo agent supply list. Also, a reminder to send us the updated notes on the launch vehicle after Rachel's meeting. Colony one out. Phoenix One, the Mid Beach headquarters. We are approaching runway 0113, preparing for landing. Acknowledge. Headquarters to Phoenix One. Copy your approach. Proceed with landing procedures. Well, whatever funk you're in, I hope you get out of it soon. I'm happy we came back, Rachel. It promises that the story of the human race doesn't end here. What we're planning to do, it's what our friends and family wanted. It's what Bruce and Anne wanted. Punishment 
They'll be seeing to it that we succeed, even if it kills you. Now, dig. 10 kilometers of winch cable. Check. Toolkit numbers 8, 11, 12, and 29. Toolkit, check. Water. Full 300 gallon tank, check. Your infiltration system, check. Medkits. Got four packed and enough rations for the trip, including a week's worth of emergency. Every single bit of supplies we'll need is packed, Sam. Vasily and I went through that same checklist three times this morning. We're set. <sighs> Awfully cramped for a 40-day trip, but I guess we'll make do. What about the THU? Did you... <sighs> yes, again, Sam. Three times this morning. I know, but... Abby's final coordinates should be uploaded into her GPS within an hour. Got it. Nicole. Keep an eye on Connor. If you're having second thoughts, please leave him here. Just keep your eyes peeled. When he's not helping lift the nukes onto Rover 6, he's inside Master Rover 3, zip-tied to his seat. <sighs> well... See you in 39 days, Commander. Safe travels. I'll go get Vasily and Connor. Will you please shut up and finish? <laughs> I guess we'll be burying them all once Chloe's finished with her samples. One of these days, Connor. Vasily, Nicole's powering up Master Rover 1. It's time to go. Outstanding. Enjoy your digging, Tim. Ah. <laughs> All right, bitch. All right. Come on. No. No, you don't. You're first, Tim. Ah, I told you I'd do this. Get off me. Get off me. Get on your feet, corner. We're leaving. Your day's coming, Tim, comrade. You hear me? Let's go. Goddamn lunatic. Grab your shovel and dig. I'll start with Andrew. We still have an EVA to retrieve Master Rover 4, so pick up the pace. From here on, no talking. October 23rd, 2057. Mission Control, Mech to Headquarters, Tonopa, Nevada. 38 days until Earth Mars close approach launch window. <clears throat> Attention! We now have both Phoenix solar cargo jets fully operational and tested in the skies. And the time has come to conduct withdrawals from global seed boats. Captain Rachel Yoshida will be piloting Phoenix 2 to London and it will travel south to the Millennium Seed Bank in West Sussex. After completing her objectives there, she will fly to Svalbard Global Seed Vault for further withdrawals at the Arctic base. I've selected her crew that will assist her in the journey east. Rachel has already drawn up a flight plan and we'll be meeting with you tonight to go over all the details. The second mission will be flying out in Phoenix 1 to Taiwan. The World Vegetable Center facility resides in Tainan City and we shall be making large withdrawals from the stockpiles there. I will be in command of this mission I'm putting Fedor in charge while I'm away. After we get all we need, we will fly to Jarvis Island and unload before returning to- Yes, Mr. Richards. To be sure, there's no working Vassy where we're headed, right? We don't know either way. Let's assume there's no visual descent guidance available. We'll just need to make sure we land in the daytime. Great. 
quite a flight. But if it's a top priority to fly across the Pacific Ocean for seeds, then we've got no choice. It is a priority, Alvarez. Everybody else, you will see in the mission briefings a number of large supply transport ships docked in Long Beach. Your mission will be to fill those ships with food, water, and supplies from Mekti Supply Depots and begin transporting to Jarvis Island. Max will oversee the supply depot withdrawals, while Jane will assemble a team to work on the dock transports. Questions? Read through your electronic dossiers and read your mission plans. Tomorrow, both crews will prep all necessary supplies for maximum two-week trips. We both take off at dawn the following morning. Dismissed. Not taking them with us. 
I program all same GPS coordinates to Cairo Valley into each computer, and will leave it alone to slowly print at its own pace. It'll take much longer to get there, as these centering machines we're attaching will be paving roads for us. If any course adjustments are required, the rover's sensors will tell us, and we can make any corrections from the command center. NASA did it with the first rovers. We can do it too. The first one should be ready by the time we set out in two weeks, right? It should. If I can get these 3,400 location sensors made in time. What are these for? Anytime we're driving these roads and, for instance, there's a storm, the rover's GPS will lock onto these sensors to guide us back on course. The sintering machine will plant one of these every kilometer. Huh. And how many do you have made? Almost 800. I think I'd rather be sitting in a rover with Connor Nye going to the South Pole than this. Extraction EVA D9, Master Rover 1, Mangala Valles, 1624.81 kilometers from Kali 1. Look, I understand Fedor's reservations, but until our greenhouses are built and providing us with another source of nitrogen, the amount I'm requesting is mandatory. Submit the order, Pete. You sure it's ready to send, Nicole?
October 26, 2057. Phoenix 1 Solar Cargo Jet. 31,000 feet in altitude. Over Siberia. This is Phoenix 1. Flying at coordinates 58.171 north latitude, 134.78 east longitude. This is the Phoenix 1 Solar Cargo Jet. There is a crew of 7 people on board. We are open on all channels seeking any emergency and non-emergency signals that may be open and hearing our call to please confirm receipt of this message and to report your location and situation immediately. If you hear this message, please report your location and situation immediately. Over. Good, Felix. Enter the text into the Russian translator and send it out now. On it. Don't forget the Morse code, too. Not sure if this translation is going to be exact. Probably would have helped to bring Nastasha on this trip or Fedor. Oh well. You really expecting no response, Commander? Never know. Starting Morse code translation now. Good. Shall we translate it in Japanese and Korean and Mongolian too? Let Felix do his job, Omar. Standing by. 500. Still no VASI. You saw London on the flyover, right? Don't expect any landing guidance, Ava. Colin, keep those spotlights pointed towards the runway. Ever landed by moonlight before? One or two times, yes. Watch your pitch. Not too much. <laughs> Gear down and arm spoilers. Approaching. Ready to minimum. deploy reverses when we land. Minimum. Spoilers arm. Here we go. 100. Lighting lights on. Steady. Ready to flare up. 50. 40. Stand by. 30. 20. Flare up. 10. Touch down. Auto's off. Deploying reversers. Slaps it full. Extending spoilers. Pretty easy, huh? We're good. Retract the flaps. Colin, shut down the radar. Scott, play your distress call. Retracting flaps. Disarm spoilers. Thrusting down on reversers. Continuing decel. Spoilers disarm. Welcome to London. It's barely after 3 in the morning, UTC. I'm going to bring us over to that row of solar trucks next to the north runway and see if we can get them charging at dawn. If all goes smoothly, we'll be in Hayward's Heath before sundown. I'll try to make sure that's the last time we land at night. I saw a line of big trucks in the hangar just now. Possible transport? If they're solar powered, they'll do the trick. Yes? Come in. I've flown over Shanghai dozens of times. Never, never seen the city so dark. 
I didn't. I'd hoped that there Jiao. would be. Yes, Alvarez. We made it. Let's get to the facility, grab these seeds, and get over to Jarvis Island. Right. We've got work to do getting those trucks up and running. Felix, play the broadcast. Stand by. Command. Alvarez, Ben will need assistance with these trucks, and you need to get your transport ready for the supply rescue mission to Taipei. There must be survivors. Let's get going, Alvarez. Lots to do and little time to do it. London. About 60 kilometers on 23 down to Hayward's Heath. Traffic won't be an issue. Incredible. Hmm? What? Look at this city. You've never been to London. That's not what I'm getting at. I think I'm still struggling to acclimate to this new earth. The designs, structures, these environments humanity's created here. After being gone from Earth for so long and now experiencing a vacant London, it's like I'm seeing things in a different light. I, I don't know, it feels like a ghost town. It's creepy. It's gonna be a while before that empty feeling goes away. Or maybe not at all. Is this what you expected when you came back, Rachel? This? <laughs> once Sam announced what had happened, and once we looked into gamma ray bursts, that didn't make seeing it firsthand any less shocking. What had you guys expected before coming back here? Up there on the moon? We knew something was up, but what was a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> At least it was quick. There's your answer, Furby. The next day, Germination Lab 5, World Vegetable Center, Tainan. We found Brassica on the fourth level of Vault 9. How much of this am I grabbing? 30 seeds of each and bring them up to us in Lab 5. Evening, Elmar. Hey, Felix. Commander. Germination test? Mm-hmm. Wu and Shun are checking samples in Lab 6. Felix and I are prepping seeds here. How was your supply run to Taipei? Not bad. Water, rations, soap, meds, and vitamins. Couldn't find any stockpiles of soup filters, but the CNSA spaceport in Ping Tong is just about an hour drive away. We should have everything we'll need. Good thinking. You'll be close to Kaohsiung too. It wouldn't hurt to do a scout for any survivors. There's millions of people in Kaohsiung. There must be someone there. Any signs of life in Taipei? You know the answer to that. Well, maybe in Kaohsiung. Better get going. There must be someone. Omar, you returned! You're back. How was Taipei? How do you think it was, Rose? He'll be alright, guys. Sorry, Felix. 
Let's continue. Supply Depot 2, Mecti Headquarters, near Austin, Nevada, two days later. I was never exposed to the real grand scale of these missions until the Space Elevator and Hercules. Most of my work was done in med labs and hospitals. 68 of these things? Though it makes up less than a percent of Earth's atmosphere, you're going to need a lot of argon if you're planning for successful ecopoiesis. Hell, Nikki, we're virtually liquidating Mechie's supply of nitrogen. And all of this will fit? Unless the schematics of Space Station Hercules are wrong, everything will fit inside. Even if it doesn't, Vasily let me know that we can safely secure it to the exterior of the ship. My god, what the hell are we even doing? I ask myself that every day now. Did Mechie ever test these echopoises? Don't hurt yourself, Nikki. Better just call them Megs. The U.S. and Canada deployed refineries in the late 2020s after the war. Obviously not terraforming grade, but they were effective enough to tackle the fallout crisis. They created the blueprint. Once fusion came along, things got easier. That's not to say Megs have been tested in the field before. They've never been tested. Yet we're putting all of our eggs in one basket. Jane, I'm with Fedora and Nikki. You're on speaker. Morning, Jane. So I received a call from Stephen and Collins. They've reached the reentry system supply facility outside of Goldfield. They should have Walter and Nicole's updated supply list, correct? Yes. Natasha reported to me this morning that her team was able to get the solar chargers on the South Korean bunkers working. So, at the moment, things are looking up. Excellent. Not bad. What's the capacity of these ships, by the way? 400,000 DWT. Big fuckers. Oh. I went ahead and sent the update to Colony One. I gave her and her team the okay to begin prepping the ships. I'm leaving HQ to go back after lunch. Um, looking at a week or two at most until we can get them loaded and ready to sail. Excellent news. Perfect, Jane. Thanks for letting us know. Safe travels back to Long Beach. Things are definitely looking up. Yeah, we'll take as much good news as we can get these days. Hopefully we'll begin loading up the ships once Commander Lee and Captain Yoshida return. Too many things to get done in such a constrained time. Still have to find time to assemble a crew for constructing this launch vehicle and train them for EVAs. I would like to be loading before they return. Clock is ticking, Mr. Baker. As I was saying, these megs have never been tested. Yet, we're going full force application with them. Only chance we have. Okay, what if it doesn't work? Not working is not an option. That's not the best you've got, is it? We can't rely on This that. is the level of risk we accept. What we are attempting to achieve here may fail. There is high probability it will. But there is a realistic chance this plan works. And anyone who knows these risks understands fully that the two best people alive to have in charge are Pete Ross and Luke Hache. She's leading. 
you see her more than we do these days. How's the baby? Planning an ultrasound in a few weeks, as soon as Sam and Tim take their EVA out to Tartarus Montes. This is over here? Tartarus Montes, huh? Just about. At the time, it wasn't considered too important, but now we need it, so... I asked Sam about stopping by there on our way back from Cairo Valley. And I'll blind him if he grants you permission to do that. It's Tim's doing. It should be his responsibility. Fair point. <sighs> All right. Um, I've got everything connected back here. Give me a sec to get around. You're not still nervous about us heading out in a few days, are you? Each time a long-range EVA heads out, I get nervous. The memories of the past eight months and patching you all up so much are still fresh on my mind. I'm sure you'll be happy to have Nikki and other doctors here once the ship comes back to Earth. Hell yes, I will. Only me looking after almost 80 people? Nope. <sighs> okay. You ready, Luke? Standing by. Kaya? Yeah? Yep. Standing by for spectrometer. Here it goes. Go power. And... Pressurization's complete. Chamber's airtight. Loop, begin atmospheric agent injection. Injecting. Injection tubes empty. And sealed. What's going on now? We're monitoring the spread and mingle of all these gases until we deem it appropriate to attempt a coalescence. Stand by for stimulation, Luke. A coalescence? How do you achieve this? A high voltage electric current powered by Colony One's fusion reactor. The lights might dim a little, Chloe. Full magnetic confinement, 100%. Copy. Just. About... How much power are you... Here we go. Activate. Jesus! What the... 8.7. Looking good. Confinement is good. Give it a few more moments. What the hell? Reactions complete. Kill it. Activation off. Kaya? Spectrometer's running. How much power are you shooting into that thing? 8.7 petawatts. 8.7 peta... what? <sighs> Gathering a reading. Stand by. Colony One's fusion reactor generates 17.1 petawatts of energy. Obviously, for a 160th scale prototype, we don't need all of that, but... Still need quite a bit for this. Spectrometry complete. Awaiting results. What exactly does this do? It measures this substance's chemical components. We need it to match the same composition as Earth's atmosphere. But we're shooting for levels from over a century ago, before it really started getting tainted. Readings complete. Let's see. Damn. Not good. Nitrogen, 76.8. Oxygen is 21.2. Argon is 0.92. Numbers are off. Our prep events. But definitely within an achievable margin, we're close. With some tinkering, I'm confident we'll get there. Ready to fire up ventilation? Copy. Opening confinement chamber. Switch on ventilation, Luke. <sighs> We've got a long way to go, but I'll admit... This is a masterful first step. I'm going to the comms hub to send headquarters the Spectra report. I'll radio Sam and Nicole the news too. So what happens when you're successful? We times everything by 60.
lost landing site. Amazon is Planitia. Mars. How heavy do you think this slab of rock might be on Earth? Ow. 750, 800 pounds. About to lose another piece. A lot of copper and nickel from what I can see. Colony 1 to Wasp landing site. Rachel and her team have reached the moon seed bank. Relay the info to Sam and Walter, please. They heard, Abby. Be sure to alert the thermonuc retrieval team. Thanks for the update. Oh. Easy, Walter. That walkway's really narrow. Let's take five after we get this loaded then. What do you say? Car the extraction's coming. Yeah, send Abby a photo. Show her all the fun she's missing. Oh. We found a considerable amount of copper and nickel deposits in this fissure vent. Walter says there's enough here to create two magnetic guidance networks. Come on. A little more. And there's what? Four fissure vents at the wasp breakage? Should be more than enough to work with. Gonna get back to it, Abby. We'll radio back in a bit. Nada, over and out. You two recognize you're gonna be melting this stuff down, right? We can break it into smaller pieces. Time move faster than I thought. How's Fedora been, Nada? Since Nikki started his treatments. Better. He sounds stronger, livelier. Still a long way to go, but he's in great hands. That is, since Hiroko is gone. Yeah. If you can see what his wife's done. Forgotten what cold feels like. Yeah, how cold does this place get? Negative 20 Celsius. Mmm, follow me. Christ. It's worse on Mars, I promise you. Oh, can't wait. Rita, hit the lights to your left. Hell of a lot of seed vaults. Over 7 billion seeds from over 50,000 species of plants. It's a lot. 
The vault seems to have been intact and still cold, which means we didn't waste our time coming here. Okay, Captain Wen, I'm sending you with Faye and Scott to begin with Sector A, vaults one through 58. Yes, Captain. A picture of the map of this place will probably help. Rita and Leslie will take vaults 59 through 106 in Sector B. Caught it. That leaves Danny and Ava. Sector C, vaults 107 through 180. These seeds better be worth it in this cold. <laughs> Everyone sound off to make sure your comms are working in this temperature. Faye Lou, Scott Richmond, Leslie Jacobs, May Wen, Lita Horchison, Eva Murphy, Danny Holland. Make sure you read through your seed list and instructions carefully, 10 samples each, then gather in the two center labs for germination test. We don't have much time here, so let's get to work. Welcome to the Millennium Seed Bank. Center, time in. 32 days until close approach launch window. Potato bin, three contents, Yukon gold, Adirondack red, Rosset, rose fin apple, and Austrian crescent. All right, potato bin four, Russet, red gold, Kennebec, and Russian banana. Omar. Happy Halloween, Felix. Commander Lee. Omar, you're back from Kaohsiung. How was it? Xiao. I see. I know that after our flyover of Shanghai, it was so... They're gone. As we've tried to tell you, but there must... they're gone. It's just the way it is. No. Thank you for your recon, Omar. I acknowledge it was a waste of time. You go on every day, just hoping to find one. Commander? Why can't we just find one? Commander. One. Commander? I said go back inside, get back to work. My father was a project manager for a software firm in Chicago. He made pretty good money, enough for my mother to stay at home and take care of me and my sister Marie. My father James was a coder, then he worked his way up. Marie, she was married to a surgeon. Two months away from their first child. You have siblings? No, only child. Your parents then, what did they do? <laughs> My mother was a manager of a robotics company. <sighs> My father was a professor for aeronautics. 
then became project manager for aerodynamics in Xiamen. Aerodynamics, huh? Makes sense. Yeah. You aren't alone. No matter everything we've gone through, everything we've seen, I still had hope that... What happened? It's not fair. None of us asked for it. None of us deserved it. But now we have it. I'll never get to say goodbye to any of my family. This is my reality, and there's no changing it. But you use that pain to push forward. It's our fuel. Rose, I hope I've not let you all down. I have tried to do my best. Commander, we support you. You've kept us alive all this time. You are our leader, and we will follow you to whatever end. Hey, Rachel, a uh, question. Go ahead. This plant here, this Hemerocallus fulva, the tawny day lily, did you know that it's not a true lily? So what? It's some ornamental plant. It's not even an actual lily. What difference does that make? Uh, it appears Scott Richmond here is a lily purist. <laughs> <laughs> That true, Scott? Would you call yourself a connoisseur? I, I don't give a shit about lilies. I'm wondering why Colony One's wanting us to waste storage space on decor. <sighs> Shouldn't we be gathering plant samples that actually- Read the whole profile, Scott. Invasive species. What's that have to do with anything? <sighs> Colony One isn't requesting these plants because they tie the room together. What do any invasive species do more than anything, Scott? They spread. They're hardy, and they can spread with ease. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, Faye. I'm not a botanist. All the plants on the checklist here, they withstand a lot of brutality and survive. It is a bit strange. Colony One's put in a giant order of seeds for us to take to Mars. But think of all the plants we're not taking back. This is the last opportunity to salvage the genetic lineage of these plants. Whatever we leave here when we fly out to Svalbard, they go extinct. African violets, roses, cacti, orchids, then all the different types of trees that we're leaving behind. I tell you what, I want all of us to pick 50 seeds from one plant that's not on the manifest. Yeah? Yeah, Colony One will deal with it. Pick one plant, run a germination test, we'll load the seeds up. I'll go meet up with May and Rita and let them know. Kinda cool. Uh, I think we know what Scott's gonna pick. Maybe I will. If I don't, then how will our descendants know what's a true lily or just some pest? <laughs> I was right, a true devotee. <laughs> Later, Gemini 22nd, Kira 238, Amazonas Planitia, Mars. Successful GPS transmitter link in the rover. It goes where we go. That's how fast the centering machine is supposed to go? It's incredibly slow. Since it's printing a road over 3,200 kilometers, it's going to take a lot of time. But don't doubt this little guy knows what it's doing. We should probably load up, Luke. Son? Better keep you updated on that journey. I have the utmost confidence, as does Chloe, right? Oh? Oh, no problem at all. It's only three weeks. I'll have more than enough time to radio in and annoy the living daylights out of her with my witty musings. You're an idiot. Come back to me, Pete Ross. I will. I swear.
Keep him in line, you two. Oh, no worries about that. Good luck. Safe travels. You coming back inside, Chloe? In a minute. I want to see them off. Please. Come back in one piece. Commander. Omar. Can't sleep either? Must be two in the morning. Look at this, Omar. This was my apartment back in Shaman. My dog. My fiance, Chan. Our wedding day was nearly two months ago. We were waiting until I came back down from Guanghangong. That was my life. Now, bones, acid rain, scorching heat. This is my life. <sighs> Ever since we came back from the moon, Finding survivors has been my priority. When we stopped in South America, search for survivors. Mexico, searched for survivors. At Edwards, I dispatched teams every damn day on the lookout. The hope to find some sign of existence, of any survival, drove me. The evidence was everywhere every day. I was defiant. <sighs> I had hope that it was just a matter of time, even coming all the way out here. Up on the moon, we had a front row seat. You saw? I did, but I didn't accept it until now. Why did I hold on to that? That false hope? Closure. Mm. I know. You know, before Rachel and Fedora showed up, I had considered fixing up the Phoenix One and flying to Shaman to see myself. As if somehow Chan, my parents, my friends would have somehow escaped this? Can you believe that? Commander Lee, I'd love to search for my people too. But our priorities have shifted. We have a launch window to meet. Oh right, Mars. You're all behind this notion, even though it sounds so far-fetched and impossible. Yet, there's this alternative. Yeah, well, fate's given us a crumb of a chance. We cannot blink. Hmm. <laughs> Someday, one of us will be saying, I told you so. Yes.
this is iron. It has a forging temperature of approximately 650 degrees Celsius. This bucket, nickel. Forging temperature of about 1100 Celsius. Lastly, we have copper, 900 degrees Celsius. This magnesium fire is burning at about 3100 degrees Celsius. In this forge, you'll be creating magnets using the iron, nickel, and copper we provide for you. On the home screen of your tablet, I've uploaded procedures on how to operate the forge, and how to create the magnets we need within this forge, as well as how many thousands you will need to make. Magnesium is abundant in the Martian soil, so there'll never be a shortage. You will be monitored constantly. Abby has set up sensors that will set an alarm if you try to leave through the door or the air ducts or any other means. If that alarm sounds, or if we see you on the surveillance cameras doing something you shouldn't be doing, a simple mouse click will turn the sprinkler system on. And I assume you know what happens when water meets a magnesium fire. I know about incendiaries, Walter. Every day there will be new buckets of metal, and every shift you will make sure they're empty. Understood. Understood. Get to work, then. Once Connor returns from his nuke retrieval duty, he'll be joining you. What an honor. Commander? Captain? Give me the comms band. Switch to cockpit and cargo hold. Cargo crew, sound off on final systems and stability check. Ben Richards, check. Check. Omar Alvarez, check. Shapo, check. Cargo is safe and secure. All systems are go. Right. Omar, Boa, Jarvis Island. Roger that, Commander. Load up the Titanon to uh, Jarvis Island flight plan. Very well. <sighs> Let us hope someday fortune shines brighter on this world. Cargo Jet, Svalbard Airport, Village of Longye Airbine, Spitsbergen Island, Norway, November 5th, 2057. 27 50, days to launch with 40, no. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown. Deploying reverse. Flaps are full. Deploying reverses down. Spoilers are extended. Almost expected a harsher landing. No Arctic ice. Yeah, but there's still wind. May retract the flaps. Holland, shut down radar. Retracting flaps. Disarm spoilers. Thrust down on reversers. Continue decel. Spoilers are disarmed. I've got a handle on it now. Okay, Scott, you can go ahead and record a new SOS message for us to play. I'm gonna taxi over to the terminal there on the left. Hopefully we'll be lucky in finding some more solar power trucks. You sure I need to record another SOS, Rachel? Who would hear it all the way up here? Get on it, Scott. <sighs> I'd take this wind 10 times over that night touchdown at Heathrow. Look to your right. Yep, the Svalbard Global Sea Vault. What are we taking from this place? Let's look at the manifest. Uh... Stockpiles of soil samples, human DNA samples. Human DNA samples? What does that mean? <laughs> Think about it, May. Oh. There we got 
random nutrients, probiotics, tanks of frozen bacteria, algae, fungi, uh, a lot of soil fixing microbes. And, and if there's any room left in our load capacity, fill the rest with any seed samples we could use. And any survivors that might happen to be around, right? That's right. This place is creeping me out. Welcome to Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Let's hope the power's still on here. Gosh! Rito, what's up? Oh, nothing. Just another skeleton. Must have been one of the workers. He was locked inside a vault in the ass end of nowhere and still got hit by the GRB. Jonas Johansson, Global Sea Vault Manager from Lavak, Norway. Poor bugger. I hope it was quick for him, as it was for the others. Ava, open up the tunnel to the vaults. Right. Looks like the interior is still cold and intact. Finally, some luck. Yeah. Some luck. Hmm, let's see. These two boxes from Germany. Yeah, those. Load them up. Huh, that's weird. This box has almost no weight to it. Because it's full of bacteria colonies. That would make sense. This cart's ready to take out, Faye. I've got it. Heading out to the truck now. Can't wait to get out of this place. I hear ya. Anything, Rita? No. Bones upon bones upon bones. There's no one here, Rachel. Rachel, Rita, help me load up these boxes. You sure all of these materials are going to keep in warmer temperatures? No. No, I'm not sure. But we flew all the way out here for it. No choice but to try. When you guys take this load down to the cargo jet, go ahead and turn off Scott's recording. We won't need it anymore. Commander Lee didn't report to know. An Italian physicist named Fermi, a hundred years ago or so, was having lunch with his colleagues, and they were discussing the existence of aliens. And he asked, where are they? If there are so many planets out there, and if there's so many of them that might harbor life, where are they? Why haven't we heard from them? Scientists for decades tried coming up with different answers to this paradox. Space is vast could take millions and billions of years for any contact to reach us. That was a generally accepted answer, Rita. There were other theories, though. One theory was that perhaps natural phenomena had destroyed their civilization. Like a gamma ray burst. I think if any other advanced race out there had their own mystery about our world, well, this GRB is Earth's answer to Fermi's paradox. The universe is a violent place. The human race on Earth is extinct on this planet. That if people living here were to all perish, no way anyone and likely anything survived. 
We're it. We're all that's left. Jonas Johansson from Larvik, Norway proves it. This is Rachel Yoshida. Rachel, how goes on Svalbard? Silent. We're beginning to send materials to the jet. Still on target to head out in a day, day and a half. Good to hear. The first convoy of materials is en route to Long Beach. And Commander Lee has landed at Jarvis Island. They're preparing supplies for the elevator carriers now. Perfect. What's new on Mars? Pete and his team should be arriving in Al Cahira Vallis today. Sam has Tim creating magnets in this forge Walters concocted. And the thermonuclear retrieval team is nearing the South Pole. GPS ended up being a bit off in Terra Sirena, and they're caught in the middle of a polar storm that's grounding them for the time being. But even with delays, everything so far seems to be progressing beautifully. It appears so. Thanks for the call, Fedor. Be safe, Rachel. Everything from our old lives. Everyone who inhabited it. There's no one left. But we are here. We've been given the opportunity to continue the human story. Now we must decide what to do with that opportunity. Thus, repeated scrutiny is a necessity. Vate fair, Vutra. 
Tommy, want to cover belly? I understand French, prick. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> Sam, we finished programming all confirmed surveying measurements, and Luke's printer is already in operation. Pete's firing up the two surveillance cameras I've placed so we can view the progress. We've packed up and are about to drive back to Colony 1. Over. Coding looks good, Pete. I told you you were wasting your time. Can never be too sure with you. Cameras should be powered on. That sounds great, Kaya. You guys have done some terrific work out there. And Nate has given me the thumbs up on your video feed from both cameras. Safe travels, guys. Colony 1, over and out. We're clear. Come on, you two. Time to go home. See you in five months, Cairo Valley. November 14th, 2057. Mission Control. Back to your headquarters. 18 days until launch window. How's the crew? They up to speed on everything they need to do? <laughs> I hope so. No one has ever constructed anything like this before. He's got it under control. My team is as ready as they can be. I have no concerns about their readiness. Captain Yoshida. All right. All right, I'll let him know. Thanks, Omar. Safe travels. Jet's ready for departure. Da, ah, it is. You don't need to be the one to do this. Design and build of spacecraft is my domain, Rachel. I need to be there. You know, every step feels like my legs will break. Perhaps leaving Earth gravity could help. I'm gonna walk you out to the jet, at least. Very well. Commander Lee, I've done my best to leave you with as good a head start as possible. In worst case scenario, I trust you'll maintain the rate of supply transfer that I've put in place. You have done a tremendous job. Your leadership has helped convince me that this unthinkable plan might actually work. We will see you in a few weeks. Good luck up there. Nikki's gonna give you a treatment before you land, right? Yes, Rachel. I've told you this. Good. And remember, the cargo from Zhao's extraction in Tainan won't go up until the bulk carriers arrive. Rachel. I'm merely being conscious of your condition is all. Everything is ready. Everyone's prepared. You've nothing to worry about. I'm one step closer to Neda. Each action I take that gets me closer strengthens me. That's great, Fedor. Nikki's been doing you good. See you soon, my friend. Oh, Rachel. Happy birthday. What? Really? <laughs> You've forgotten. Yeah, couple weeks at most. 
I'm going to do my first analysis, and then I'll send all my data to the headquarters for Nikki's analysis, and then she'll have Philip and the Chinese doctors look it over. Then they'll send their results over to me, and I'll cross-analyze it, so... The baby's not going anywhere. Walter is fine. <sighs> Let me help you up. Ah, damn, that's sore. Once you're pushing that kid out, this amnio test will be a cinch. Nada, this is Abby. Fedora and his crew are making final preparations for their departure for Jarvis Island. Be right there. I'm hoping Sam's planning on retrieving this ultrasound machine soon. It's on Sam's to-do list. Let's go, Walter. My turn. What do you think? And these are... What? Braces, essentially. They are temporary model that Luke printed out while Pete's creating the steel ones. And they open up like this. You put your legs inside here and close the braces around them here. These latches tighten and these elastic Velcro straps go around your quad and calf. In order to keep them in place, I'm going to implant a few small anchors into the sides of your lower femur. And that will also connect to the braces and provide even more stability. Simple, quick procedure, and I'd like to get that procedure out of the way now. Sounds pretty pain-free. Compared to what's on the horizon, Paul, this is a cinch. Your physical rehab will demand a very painful contribution. It's going to hurt. Shit, it already hurts, Chloe. Go ahead. I am going to get you walking again, Paul. I hear ya.
right side, Tim. At least you're not in the plane of Mistral. You're certain the two of you know how to operate this thing? We both have operational training for the space elevator. Rita and Daniel will do fine, Omar. Unless you think you'd do better. Oh, it's yours to fly, guys. Mr. Mendez, get headquarters on the line. Let them know we're set to depart. Mekti headquarters. Elevator climber 2 to Mekti headquarters. Departing now. We'll call with an update when we reach the stratopause. Climber 2, over. Climber 2, crew cabin secured and pressurized. Loading coordinates. Safeties unlocked and disarmed. Charging launch laser. I've informed Commander Lee. Safe travels and we'll look forward to your call at 50 kilometers. Headquarters, over and out. Coordinates for space elevator orbit station loaded. Copy that. Launch laser at 73% charge. Capsule standing by. Copy on stabilization system and arm support thrusters. <sighs> Nervous, Miss Floros? I'll be fine, I promise. <clears throat> Remember, if you need to use it, we have bags under. I'll be fine, Fedor. It's a normal thing. Uh, launch laser at 100%, 6.44 petawatt charge. Stabilization and support thrusters armed and standing by. Go for launch. Copy that. <sighs> Activate climber two launch in five, four, three, two, one. Engage launch laser. Oh. That feeling takes me back. Lift off. Ultimate reading seven point meters and climb. Activate stabilization. <sighs> Nikki? Mm -hmm. Good. Stabilization activated. Green across the board. I get like this sometimes on the elevator. Hmm. I'm sure you're looking forward to zero G again. Absolutely. Oh, I wish I had the same optimism for this launch vehicle construction. But why are you hung up on me? Retract all docking modules and auxiliary extensions, align them with the Hercules spinal cord, wrap it in a 3D printed web along with Mekti's 4 rocket, and then place Mekti 3 rocket on the back. Look at the mission details. Easy. Yeah, Felix. Pretty cut and dry. Ever worked in zero gravity, Mr. Mendes? I was an advisor to Administrator Dario Bidas and worked almost exclusively surface-side. I will not sugarcoat it. This will be thoroughly time-consuming, taxing work. We're creating a launch vehicle here that's never been tested, and never will be tested. Everyone here shares your concerns. And we all understand what happens if we do not execute each objective with perfection. <sighs> but it needs to be done. When it comes to life or death, the concept of difficulty becomes irrelevant. Well, that happens. Yes, 
We've got time. What if we break protocol before Turby Crater, though? Wondering what would happen if the same thing were to occur with us. Break protocol? Yeah. An accident. Like Abby and Walter. Uh, hmm. Chloe does have protocol for that occurrence. If it happens, then we follow protocol. Maybe we don't have to wait until the Turby Crater settlement is completed. We could conceivably move there after. Move there with a child with this kind of surface exposure. How in the world would we be able to transport... Oh, uh, hey, I, I, I have an idea. What idea? What are you thinking? Tunnels. Fusion-propelled personal tunnels, uh, uh, like on Earth. Why didn't I think of this before? I need to call headquarters. Comms or on. You guys hear me okay? What we would need is uh, some kind of uh, boring machines that could... Um... Crystal clear, Sam. We've got your rover packed and ready for departure. <sighs> Thanks, you too. You don't have Tim's comms on? The peace and quiet is nice. Let's get back inside. Safe travel, Sam. Take care of yourselves, too. If you come back around, it's fine. We'll get by. We'll be back in about a week. We would need to print support structures that can maintain structural integrity in case of any seismic events. And in addition, boring machines that can do the digging. We need tram cars, security infrastructure. But it may work. Tunnels, huh? Captains Mei Wen and Bo Xia. Mm-hmm. Captain Omar Abares. Lieutenant Ava Murphy. Lieutenant Ben Richard. Right, right. Um, Danny Holland and Rita Holgerson. Uh huh. Yeah, I think that's it. Hmm. So, we have one, two, three, nine people out of over sixty, with varying degrees of piloting experience. Yeah, that sounds right. Huh. All right. Landing MMLHVs have no comparison to anything you've ever flown or landed. And you only have the external cameras to provide any visual reference for what you're doing. I trust you have the right kind of skill and intuition needed, and I am sure that Omar, Ava, and Captains Wen and Sha should be fine with enough exposure in the CC. But everyone else, we train and simulate, train, simulate, train and simulate.、Mm-hmm. As many times as it takes for them to get it right every time, yes, round the clock. For everything we're doing, it's all for nothing if we can't land these things. Yes, I agree. Though you must be patient, Rachel. No one asked for this. I'll make sure to upload procedures and manuals in everybody's personal tablets. I may take a group with me to the simulator tonight after dinner. Could use a practice. Uh-huh. 
found a way in. I've turned off my helmet and suit lights. Seems to be a lot of ace protrusions. Facing the cable to my suit. You ready? Yeah. 3.1 kilometers down. 3.1 kilometers up. Head first. Could be worse. Better than being zip-tied to a seat for over 10 hours. Once you have the nukes drill reprogrammed, you start your ascent, you can honestly stand on the top and ride it up. So, yeah, could be worse. You're secured. Go ahead and hook your tow cable to the nukes winch cable. Supply transport ship, Pacific Ocean. Boring machines? Luke makes a convincing argument with his designs that will cut down on personal. Yeah, yeah, I understand. By... Look, I'm looking at his schematics and renders on my tablet now. Just cutting it a bit close with supply requests? This ensures we have to bring all four ships back. I have Max locating all the materials he needs. Good win. By the time your ships get back to Long Beach, everything will be waiting for you there, ready to load up. <sighs> Do we even have room for this added cargo? No, but as long as they're secured in Fedora's 3D printed webbing, then it doesn't matter. I'm watching the days to the launch window winding down more and more. Forgive me if I'm getting a little concerned about getting everything done on time. We're still on schedule, Jane. The only real delays that could arise are with the launch vehicle construction. Or your crew on Mars getting bogged down with another storm. Colony One's the least of our worries. They'll be ready for us. We're getting a call from Max now. Over and out. Never a moment's peace, Jane. Yeah. 
beats what those sons of bitches are doing on the South Pole of Mars right now. I still have hope that you are alive. This broadcast has been programmed to play once every 30 minutes. If this attempt to reach you is successful, please contact us. Again, this is Commander Zhao Li calling any and all survivors. Please. Over and out. Ah, Scott, I have a favor. What is it? I have this recording I made. It's, um,. Can you program the comm system to repeat it every 30 minutes on all the loudspeakers in the base? Huh. It's... I don't know, Scott. As a just-in-case, I was thinking we could... On it, Commander. Oh, great! Um, I have instructions for how to load in the Colony 1 frequency here, and how to operate the system. I know I should put this matter to bed. It's been months looking for survivors. And I know now there's a better chance of finding people on Mars than Earth after a gamma ray burst. But it's not hurting anything, so... Thank you, Scott. Thermal nuclear extraction site 1. Plane on Mars Rail. Five hours, eighteen minutes into descent. I have visual. At least I hope this is it. Just a pile of loose snow. That icy bit chiseling's gotta go somewhere, Vasily. Must have broken up on its tumble down to the bottom. It's what I'm thinking. About three meters to go. Procedures 
up on my tablet. Let me know when you got access to the wiring harness. Copy. Bygones be bygones facade. The least you can do 
is follow your orders, keep your mouth shut, and maybe, just maybe, you'll survive this. That choice is yours, which is a level of clemency that I know I would never grant you. Uh, lovely speech, Nicole. Powerful. Like I said, choice is yours.
definite plus. We truly had no idea what her genes would be like, considering she's the first human being to ever be conceived on Mars. But her? She looks to be a normal, healthy baby. Lungs are maturing steadily, no alarms, stable glucose levels. All in all, ship shape. Wait. She? Mm-hmm. Congratulations. You mean? I mean you're having a girl. The first baby born on another planet will be a girl. <laughs> well. I'll be goddamned. Planum, Austral, South Pole Thermal Nuclear Array, Side 2, 83 degrees, 5 minutes, 10.37 minutes South Latitude, 145 degrees, 35 minutes. 37.75 west longitude. Thank you for the update, Gaia. It's tremendous. <sighs> We're going to finish loading Thermal Nuke 2. Then we'll set up our THU. Be silly, over and out. Ain't that something? The first child on Mars. Uh, I can't believe it's in such good health. I, I suppose we'd underestimated the shielding strength of Colony 1. <laughs> I wonder what they'll name her. Mm. I always like the name Oksana. I like Iris. Mm. That's good. My mother's name was Mila. She passed away when I was four. Not many lasting memories of her. Therefore, no prejudices. <laughs> it's a pretty name. Get in the middle. I'll take your end. Repeat the process from the first nuke. You don't want me to take the back? Get in the middle. Exactly like the first one. You have to consider her parents, though. Americans. With the capital A. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. You two in position? <sighs> nah. Fuck this. Connor. Connor, get back here. Connor! Uh, or else what? What are you gonna do if I say fuck the both of you and stop helping? Then what? <sighs> okay. Hey. Come here, Connor. No, don't you touch me. Down on your knees. Ah! Nicole, stop! 
while hanging freely above over three kilometers of darkness. Now, if you agree to do as you're told and follow orders, I'll take you out. If you choose to keep on like this, we'll lower you down and you will stay there throughout the night. Every night. You're wasting your time talking to him, Vasily. Connor. How do you wish to proceed? All right, all right. Just get me out of here. I'll play ball. I'll stop the pitching and whining, okay? I'll do whatever you ask. Just get me out of this pit. Good. Hearing that is a start. Nicole, lower him down. What? You said I could decide. Changed my mind. Vasily, Vasily, don't you fucking do this. Right, stop. Let me out of here. Let me the fuck out of here. Nicole, give me my tablet. Vasily! Nicole! Huh. Vasily, I'll play ball, okay? I'll play ball! Hold it, Nicole. That's good. Lock that in place there. Uh, 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 oh, God, Vasily! Please, please, let me out of here! Elena Torres, born July 20th, 2022. Father, Gustavo Torres. Mother was Ana Torres. She had a younger sister named Rosario, graduated with honors from University of Texas El Paso with a degree in mechanical engineering. Joined MECDI shortly after. She was always so enthusiastic about everything, even odd at times. Her constant optimism, no matter what. Vasily, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about Alina. She loved her work. She loved the people she worked with. Always ready with a compliment. I, I never met someone who had any bad thoughts towards her. Everyone was her friend. Until you came to Mars, she even considered you a friend, Connor. Vasily? Vasily, please, let me out of here. I was only following Tim's orders. You know what it's like. No, Lieutenant Dye. I have no idea what it is like to be you. Whenever you think we're going overboard with our treatment of you, I want you to remember something. Remember the face of Alina Torres. Remember the face of the person who considered you a friend. And remember, you're still alive because we allow it. Vasily! Vasily! Nicole, lure him down to 300 meters and lock the cable in place. Oh, come on, man! I didn't... Let him dangle there for the I, night. Look at He's earned it. Vasily! Copy that. Vasily, come back, get me out of here! No, stop! Vasily! Nicole! <laughs> ERV-1, we read successful leak check 2. Bo, engage docking locks. Copy, engaging locks now. Standing by to open hatch. Roger, Danny. Locks engaged. Copy that, open hatch. Great work. We have now accomplished the easiest objective of this entire mission. Well, hoorah to that. Hatch is open. Confirm successful docking with Space Station Hercules. We have nine days until the arrival of the close approach launch window, and we need to get started with retraction and removal of all docking extensions. Methuno 17th, Colony 1. Seven days until close approach launch window. I think you'd be stupid to think there wouldn't be delays with so many moving parts to this operation. As long as we get them in transit to Mars by Cancer 10th, we're fine. They still have a week to work with. Even then, 
Probably shouldn't risk it, though. No true rush with the magnetic guidance network. Though I'd like to have it tested and ready before we head up to orbit with NATO. You have my solemn vow that once we finish up with this last nuke tomorrow, that I'm going to try to get back as soon as I can. Colony 1 to Master Rover 3. Signals open. Anything we can do to help them speed up with the launch vehicle? Likely not. Fedora's got double the amount of people working on the construction that we called for. All we can do is let them do their thing and hope it goes according to procedure. Master Rover 3 to Colony 1. Good morning, Kaya. Tim and I are going to eat some breakfast, then make our way around the southern slope in order to reach our supplies. Sounds good, Sam. Keep us updated. Over and out. Tim has been making good progress on the Ford, right? Oh, yeah. He's been creating magnets faster than we planned for. <laughs> Guess sitting around all day locked in our quarters gets boring. I can attest, it does. I'd love to have someone with that level of productivity these days. Though since he cooled off in the extraction pit the other day, he's been a bit better. Thanks for the landing sequence manuals, by the way. Thanks for some good reading with Vasily's on descent. We're gonna need to simulate like crazy once we get up to the tarantula and get her back online. Anyway, you're gonna head outside and get harnessed up for nuke four extraction. Take care, guys. <sighs> we still got a few hours until we get to the landing basin, so me and I are gonna enjoy the scenery in our own company for a bit. Please kill me. It's all coming together. Someone pinch me. Master Rover 
three. Turner Osmontes. Hmm. All right, I think this is about as close as we're going to get. Let's get outside and take a look on how to get up to their resting place. Fucking hell. Out. Ah. Supply landing zone. Amazon is Planitia. <sighs> you keeping it a secret? <sighs> yeah. What's the big deal? It's not a big deal. We will tell you all when we're ready. <laughs> okay. Sure. <sighs> Go ahead and pull the marker, Pete. On it. when Tim and Connor get back. Additional hands with these magnets will be lovely. They're extracting the last nuke tomorrow and beginning the return journey the day after that, so you know. Light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> yeah. Whew. Once Sam and Tim come back, I'm gonna need as many hands as I can get on this thing. Three weeks is cutting it close. I hear you. Let me help you with this one. Obviously, we need to finish making all the magnets first. Thankfully, Tim's proven himself more than capable. One, two, three. Ah. A marker, kick it. Got it. Watch your feet. Ah. Help is coming. I see the supply capsules right where the GPS said it would be. Uh -huh. the rover. And their housing unit. I venture to guess they're still inside, too. And if not, we're going to spend as much time as we need looking for them. <sighs> You're alright, Sam. Everything you set up for the greenhouse. Lisa, she, she kept me in check on my loop. When I lost my wife. I fell off the rails. Whatever good I'd done before then. That, the wrecked rover, Orlando and Jennifer, David and Alina. That is the legacy I've created. What Lisa would have thought of me. What I'd done. She would have fought against me. I know someday there will be an accident. Maybe the sprinkler system activates when I'm in the magnet forge. Maybe there's a pressure breach in my suit during an EVA. I expect it, and frankly, I'm due. All the same, if I ever get the chance, I'd like to commit one good act before the end. 
Years from now, our descendants will look back on us the few remaining humans who used instinct and expertise to save themselves from extinction. And they'll know I tried to stand in your way. I'm the villain. But like I said, if there's a way I can actually contribute before that happens, that's all I want. Who knows? Maybe one day they'll look back and say, sure, the man was an absolute monster, but he did that one thing, and it helped. We're wasting daylight, and we've got a lot of work to do. <sighs> sure.
better for it. 60 meters. We'll see about that. Uh, Y'all think you beat me. Y'all think you won. Did David Stern ask for his line to end? Or Orlando? Or Jennifer? 40 meters. I think I can see you. I see you too. Oh, crazy how dusk looks like the middle of the day when we spent the last nine hours in a tunnel. 20 meters. Uh, okay. Connor, no! Goodbye. Connor! 